Hello everyone. Good morning from sunny Latvia. This is Grandmaster Art on Actions. And I'm back with a new stream and my newest bootcamp, which is already a tradition of already 21 editions. And um, once a week, typically once a week, I try to explain some interesting and theoretical concepts in a game of chess. Uh, hello, yes, mama. And uh, today's topic is going to be Sicilian Nidorf. Yeah, Sicilian Nidorf. I mean, one of the most popular defenses for black. And uh, of course, I don't expect that this is going to be some kind of an encyclopedia. So those who have no knowledge of the defense, they'll come out of this uh, boot camp as super experts. Of course, no, that's not ambition because virtually it's impossible to do this in several hours. But at least, at least what we can do and what I will aim to do is try to get some kind of an overview of the possibilities and the core ideas in the Sicilian Nidorf so that perhaps you'll find it interesting and you could try to employ in your own games. Right. Oh, all right. So what is Sicilian Night of? I mean, obviously everybody already knows this. I mean, imagine the vast majority. So Sicilian Night of e4, c5, knight of 3, d6. And there's many opportunities here. So d6, the core idea of this move, black wants to play knight of 6, target opponent on e4, otherwise immediate knight of 6. White could play e5, and black knight already is forced to either go to d5 or somewhere else. Yeah, most likely to d5, and this is not good. So that's the reason why d6 is quite a popular defense. Uh, let's assume white is going to play d4 here. I mean, if we'll have the time, we'll check also the other opportunities here. C takes, knight e4, knight f6. Yeah, so now we are safely playing knight of six because there is no e5 and most of the occasions white plays knight c3. Yeah, there is very little alternative here what white could do. For example, something like uh, bishop d3, it's just not good. Um, probably the simplest reason is that after knight c6, this knight is forced either to take or retreat and black can easily already equalize by playing e5 or d5 very quickly. Uh, the other alternative here is to play f3, and this is tested for quite some time, but uh, typically black gets quite a reasonable game here. And, um, oh, just a second, I think it was, yeah, f3, yeah, sorry, e5, um, Bishop b5 check is no good, and after knight b3, bishop e6, c4, this is quite a big theory. But, I mean, it's considered to be not so dangerous for black, because black typically plays a5, a4, gets a nice control of many squares, while white is aiming for this Marozzi bind structure. Maybe I'll very, very slightly explain this um, um, setup once we'll get there. Hello, Akshit. How are you? So the main main line obviously is after knight of six, knight c3, and a6. Yeah, a6. So I've asked actually a number of students when we have started to study the uh, Sicilian knight of, I mean, what's the point of a6? Why do you play a6? Yeah, the, uh, the reason is very simple, because we are aiming to play most of the occasions to play e5. And e5 leads to very dynamic game. For example, here, I mean, I could play, of course, immediately e5. But after e5 check, there is quite an annoying check. Bishop b5. Knight b7 is not so good because white immediately starts to attack this weakness on d6. Not good. So something like bishop d7 takes, takes, knight e2. Now for black, it's quite difficult to prove why he has weakened the square on d5. So that's the reason, that's the reason, I mean, very, very short explanation why a6 is played here and here. <laughs> yeah, here every single move pretty much available in white's disposal has been tried out. So the most popular moves here, I mean, historically, is the simple move, bishop e2. White just makes a short castle, tries to play something like bishop e3, f4, maybe bishop f3. It really depends what black is doing. Uh, the other move is quite popular, bishop g5. 
What an idea, typically to play f4, queen f3, long castle, maybe g4 takes, g5, those are the core ideas. Hello, Yosef. Um, there might be some occasions when white is immediately rushing forward with the f4. Yeah, sometimes it's an um, interesting transposition of the order of the moves, although the bishop feels better here on g5. But I mean, people have played f4. And then there's many moves. There's the fisher sozin attack with bishop c4. Bobby Fischer uh, made it uh, quite famous as he was exclusively using bishop c4 as white. I will briefly touch this. Uh, the modern theory considers that this is not a dangerous move and black gets an easy game, although some people are playing this still, although not as a regular weapon. And then there's, of course, many other moves like uh, h3 with the idea to play g4, bishop g2, try to fight for space advantage. There is a bishop e3, there is f3, bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, the so-called English attack. Uh, there's, um, yeah, bishop d3, it's quite a rare move. There's even h4, there's even the rook g1. There's, yeah, the last move I think I saw was bishop d2. <laughs> yeah, that is already <clears throat> uh, quite a popular joke. Is there a single move that white hasn't tried? Yeah, a4, knight b3, uh, a3, so many moves. All right. While all of that is quite interesting, uh, the fried liver attack, no, I haven't seen it. No, I haven't seen it. Let's start with something. Let's start with something. So the core idea, uh, why we are going for this uh, setup is, of course, it really depends what our opponent is doing. So let's say white is playing uh, something simple. Yeah, this is what many people are playing. Bishop e2. Yeah, that's, of course, one of the most uh, popular openings. The idea, again, is to play a short castle and then depends what black is doing. So we are going to play e5, and the reason is why we are playing e5. Uh, it seems to be a concession. We are giving away the square on d5, but we are fixing the pawn on e4, which makes a possible target. Now let me find you some games here, just a second. So here, for example, is a game how very quickly this can go wrong for white. So let's say white is doesn't know anything. Just a second. I'll find a game for you. Okay. So bishop e2, e5, and knight b3. Yeah, there's two moves. There is knight f3, there's knight b3. Uh, knight b3 is quite fine. Bishop e7, and our typical idea, as seen in many uh, Sicilian knight or lines, we want to play bishop e6, Knight bd7, and then depends what the opponent is doing. Sometimes we want to play b5, b4, try to question this knight's legitimacy on c3 and pressure the e4 pawn. Other ideas after bishop e6 and knight e7 involve, yeah, castle short, yeah, castle is also a possibility, always, but rook c8, rook c3, knight e4 is a very common way how Black is destroying the center. Um, okay, so here opponent was playing a four. Yeah, seemingly nothing, nothing wrong about that. Short castle, short castle, and b5. Yeah, so this is interesting order of the moves because not always the bishop goes to e6. It can go to b7, knight b7, and pressure the pawn on e4. Uh, so a3, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, um, every single time I've played Cecilia Nadal for myself, I consider a3 to be a big success for black. Because typically the most challenging approach for white is try not to spend time on a3. And if possible, white is aiming for a4. A4. So we don't want to take an A4 in pretty much any position because this would generate a weakness on A6. Quite easy to target. Yeah, thank you, Chess Queen, for your raid. How was your stream? Did you reach the 10,000 uh, members? <laughs> yeah, I think I briefly saw you there. All right, all right. Thank you. Thank you for your raid. I hope you had a good one. I hope you managed to achieve your goal. New Year's. Uh, stream with a goal of 10,000 followers. 
Alrighty, so this is not really a great idea. And uh, typically black here plays b4, knight e5, and here specifically either knight x on d5 or simple bishop b7. Yeah, this is quite a tra traditional idea in the uh, in the knight of. Exchanging the b4 pawn for the e4 pawn is great. Okay, here is queen b6 check, so this is this is not even working. So this is quite a traditional trap for for black. And that's the reason, that's the reason why white is trying to play a4 at the right time. And not always black wants to play b5. But a3, like I explained, a3 is not dangerous. You're happy to see that. Knight bd7, here, bishop b7, bishop f3, and rook c8. Now this, uh, from the quiet uh, Sicilian knight of opening, is pretty much a dream position for black. And if you'd ask an engine, an actual engine, how it evaluates this position, black is already bare. So what do we want to do? We want to take rook takes on c3, perhaps, knight e4, and gain a very strong command in the center. So. This is, of course, what white tried to stop with queen e2. And here's what I would like to uh, explain about this position. Uh, when you get these kinds of positions, white typically aims for a kingside attack. So f5, g4, g5, rook g1, and try to start a big attack to close the center first. The reason here why white didn't play f5 because now you have to reckon with, with the, this idea. Rook takes on c3, b takes, knight e4. And after something like uh, queen e1, knight f6, d5, bishop d6. This is an excellent position. Hello, Alberto. Yeah, <laughs> I just had a breakfast myself. So. <laughs> so now I can talk some chess. Yeah, thank you. Thank you that you're here. Uh, this is not great for white. So white plays queen e2, and here's another idea again. So like I mentioned, rook takes on c3. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's fun because we are creating some uh, pressure against the e4 pawn. But I would say be extremely careful when you're executing this. I, th I would say that you can safely play rook c3 and knight e4 if you're actually winning this pawn. Here, probably not. So since white is threatening to play f5, now we have a different idea. We take on f4, and this is quite a thematic idea in the Sicilian neither for black, the control of the e5 square. So for example, bishop takes on f4, knight e5, and if white would take, this is a super position for black, because we have very strong bishops, very nice knight, and what are these guys doing here? And this is a terrible bishop. So white is simply worse. So white did not play that, knight e4. There is an outpost on f5, but it is always easily stopped with g6. And one of the typical ideas here, what do we want to do, is to play knight e7, control the e5 square, and play bishop f6. Bishop g7, position the bishop on the long diagonal, Perhaps think about the right time to strike here on e4. Here, however, there is quite an interesting alternative, which is not always there, because after knight e1, only after knight e1, we can take on f3, forcing white to close the f line, and black gets easily a great game by preparing to play d6, d5 and taking over the control of the game. So this is a perfect example how things can go absolutely wrong for white, who is unsuspecting what is the most accurate order of the moves here. So the best order of the moves actually to play here is play short castle, not to rush with a four, play king h1. Now this is usually quite a useful move for white, and here the trick is actually b5 is not good because of a4, b4. And now there is this knight e5, which I already mentioned to you. 
And Knight takes on e4 is going to be a problem because there is quite an annoying pin. So f5 already loses material, takes takes, and check. You don't want to do that. So this is not great. So and after knight e5, if I am forced to protect this pawn, I mean I could play of course something like bishop b7 here. Yeah, something like takes, takes, and f3. Yeah, this feels slightly worse for black because bishop e3, a5, take control of this square. This is a weakness on b4. We want to avoid that. And that's why actual theory here is that after king h1, black plays b6 first. And after, let me try to remember, bishop e3 here, f3, now black plays b5. <laughs> this is quite interesting actually, so that now after a4, b4, knight e5, white cannot take with the queen. And after e takes f5, we are generating quite a nice game at the king side. Right, so this is sort of like an introduction to the um, um, the classical line bishop e2. I think I had one game by Gary Kasparov. Just let me check. Um, just a second, just a second. Yeah, okay, I think I can show you. Here's, here's going to be one, one of the latest... Uh, games that was played by Gary Kasparov as a, I think he was still a world champion back in 2000, before he lost the championship title to uh, Vladimir Kramnik. And of course, uh, hey, typical king, Gary Kasparov was one of the greatest players ever to have played the Sicilian Nidorf. And Sicilian Nidorf, it bears the reputation of a very aggressive defense for black, where black is fighting for initiative, He's fighting for the central, he's going for hostilities, and there's so many sharp lines. And if you would check from the modern players who are still playing the Sicilian Nidorf at the highest level, I mean, they are. Hikaru Nakamura, very sharp player. Yane Pomneshi, what else to add there? Maxim Vashielograf, uh, Veselin Topalov, uh, probably I forgot to mention somebody. I mean, these guys. They're playing the chess at the highest level, and they're playing the Sicilian Knight of. Um, myself, I'm a GM. I'm not 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 that high level, but um, I've came to realize that Sicilian Knight of, at least for me, is a great alternative weapon. I'm sort of afraid to use it as a primary weapon because the theory is quite deep. So now I'm talking about the GM level. Uh, Playing. So, for example, if I want to play a competitive chess, let's play, I want to play in some official European championships, uh, quite a high level, I, I, I'm sort of afraid to play Sicilian Nidorf because if opponents are well prepared, the theory is something 20, 25 moves. At club level, absolutely acceptable. It's totally, totally great opening and defense. All right, so D6. So the game is between Vishwanathan Anand and Gary Kasparov. Played in year 2000 of Linares Super Tournament. So here we go, e5. A uh, word of um, um, advice. It's not always e5. Yeah, there's the major difference. This probably would be a longer story. But uh, pretty much every self-respecting Sicilian Knight of Player has mixed his experience with e5 and e6. A reason about e6, I mean, this line used to be quite popular in the uh, previous World Championship matches between Gary Kasparov and Anatoly Karpov, various shevening and structures, which is slightly something else. But as far as I'm concerned, the biggest reason why this line and this approach is considered to be uh, slightly passive is that it gives white a chance to expand very quickly at the king side. So, for example, I would play something like a6, I would play something like uh, h3. h3 is one of the most modern moves here. h3, let's say I'll play e6, g4. I'm not suspecting anything. I'm playing bishop e7, which already is not the best move. 
g5, here, h4, here, something like uh, bishop e3, here, queen d... Oh, what did I do? <laughs> queen d2, uh, short castle, long castle, f4, h5, g6. As you can see, white is so much faster. And you want to do something here, you want to do badly, but it's always slower than white. Always. And I think this is the general understanding between very good players, is that you don't want to give white so much space at the king set so quickly. So actually here, if I remember correctly, the best move is after g4, knight e7. Yeah, some very, very smart move not to make a short castle concentrate at the queen side first and um, don't make a short castle. So e6 is completely different opera, but if uh, so, so if you are playing e5, this stops white's ambitions uh, to fight for the space advantage at the king side and allows us to get rid of the knight on d4 and start active operations on e4. So I would say like this, it's um, like a changing fashion. So right now the fashion is to play e5. Back in the 90s, people used to play e6. Now, maybe after a couple of more years, people will start to play the so-called Dragodorf with g6, which I'll slightly mention. And um, yeah, so everything is changing rapidly. So back to the game, Anand against Kasparov. Bishop e2, e5, knight b3, bishop e7, short castle, bishop e6. Um, bishop e6, I am... Not really happy about this move. I think black should leave the option here to play bishop b5, bishop b7, and knight d7. So this is, I think, slightly too early. But okay, I mean, Kasparov definitely knows what he's doing. That's my opinion. Uh, yeah, b3, g3 systems. If I'll manage Thanos say I'll explain them. Queen c7. Here. Yeah, so this knight e5 is quite a common idea, not only in uh, Sicilian Nidorf, but in the Sicilian Sveshnikov as well. If you were following the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Corana back in 2018, you probably saw that this was quite a common motive. White gets a comf comfortable space advantage at the queen side, plans to play something like c4, if possible, b4, c5. I don't know how really, because the knight is here. But that's the traditional idea. And in this particular game, Kasparov showed how to make a good use of the e5 square. <clears throat> so e takes on f4 is a traditional idea. Black is gaining an outpost on e5, although this allows for white to transfer the knight on f5. So black needs to be super, super careful here. Here, here, not, not to miss any c4, c5 ideas. A very fast forwarding. I'm not sure if h h5 was necessary. Now this, yeah, this is a dream position for black. Because this is one of those positions that black is aiming for. There is no penetration squares for white to land on the five. Those are very beautiful knights, very strong bishop, and typically black tries to play something at the queen side. So ideally, if I would try to get a dream position, it is somehow try to get rid of this bishop, somehow try to trade this knight, and if possible, I'm aiming, yeah, I'm aiming for an end game. The good knight, probably on e5, against a bad bishop. And this is a common, common motive in many Sicilian knight of lines. So black is very often playing against this bad bishop, although here in this particular game, Kasparov made quite an interesting uh, exception. He took on f3. Yeah, this is something specific because he was intending to play knight e4 first, and he realized that this position is greater than with knight on e5. Um, yeah, so again, let me go back shortly while I try to explain some of the core ideas that one, that black wants to do and that white wants to do. Hello, Aditya. 
So ideally, like I explained, black wants to create a very dynamic position. Either bishop e6, knight bd7, or b5, bishop b7, fight for these squares. What white wants to do, he wants to take complete control of the d5 square. So, for example, one of the ideas here for white is to play bishop g5, take on f6, play knight e5, exchange the light square bishops, exchange the knights, and dominate with a good knight against a bad bishop. I'll show you one example. Just a second. I have to find it first. Uh, where is it? Mm -hmm. Need to find it first. I think I got it somewhere. Already I can find it. All right, so let's move on and maybe I'll remember this game. It's lost somewhere. Um, why does no one ever play h6? I wish it was uh, so simple. <clears throat> so okay, I'll I'll show for memory. I'll show for memory. So one of the ideas here, um, which line was it again? Ah, oh, oh, wait a second. I think I found it. I think I found it. All right, all right. This is going to be a great game, a great example. So one of the most popular continuations here is h3. Like I explained the h3 idea for white, and this is quite modern stuff, is to play g4, bishop g2, g5, try to gain considerable space advantage, and then most notably play bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, and try to focus at the play at the king side. So again, now we are playing e5, knight e2 is the main move. Because white is aiming to play g4, bishop g2, knight g3, perhaps g5, and take control of this square. Again, unsuspecting player will play something like this. Here. Here. Bishop g2. Something like knight c6 looks normal. Knight g3, bishop e6. We have made all of the normal looking moves. Yet here. Something like, I don't know, b5. I would say black is already strategically lost because he is lacking any active play at the queen side. White's attack at the king side will start very, very quickly. Queen d2, long castle, f4, I'm not so, not so sure why white would want to give away this square on e5, but prepare h5, g6, knight f5, maybe even knight e5 is a possibility. Look at this outpost. Uh, for black, it's so difficult. So difficult to organize anything at the queen side. And that's the reason now you're gonna come to a real shocker if you don't know the Sicilian neither. One of the super popular approaches in various uh, Sicilian neither lines is to stop this idea to push g4. Either the pawn is on h3 or on f3. I'll show you also the line with f3. Here, black plays h5. Now, this is quite an amazing move. So, h5, the idea, again, we are stopping all of the hostilities at the king side. So, we want to play, yep, no, I'm bishop e6, knight e7. Well, depends what, what's going to happen after that. We could play bishop e7, maybe b5, b4. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe queen c7. Sometimes we can make a long castle, but the big idea is to stop the g4 from happening. And why? Just cannot, cannot easily make it happen. Something like, I mean, to play f3, g3, rook g1, g4. I mean, it takes forever. Nobody does it. I mean, this is just, just not good. And that's the reason why here, uh, why it plays g3. Aiming for a positional approach. Knight e7. Yeah, about this knight e7, what I want to mention is when you're playing with the black, 
you always think about the control of the d5 square and you're always um, try to be careful if you are active enough. So for example, I'll play something unsuspecting again. I'll play some standard moves. And that's the, that's the thing. You cannot play Nidorf by playing standard developing moves. And this is why it's so popular and sometimes so difficult for white to understand. So let's say I'll play bishop e7. Well, we'll play something like, again, bishop g5. Seemingly, what was this, right? I'll make, I don't know, bishop e6. Takes, takes. Maybe this is not the best move. I just want to illustrate what might happen here. Knight e5. I activate my bishop here, here. And let's say white plays something like this. So again, white's dream position. I already misplayed it. doesn't matter. White's dream position is I want to trade these bishops. From the Sicilian Svesh, quite a common idea is to trade to, through h3 and e6. I want to trade a pair of knights. And that's it. This is the dream position that white is aiming for. A beautiful knight on d5 against a sad bishop. Either on h6, either on e7, either on f8, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is the dream position that white is always aiming for. And this is something that you would have to understand that when you're going for the Sicilian knight, this is something you want to avoid. You don't want to get this ideal position for white if you're playing with black, of course. And one of the typical ideas here is to play not bishop e7, uh, but knight bd7. So here the whole idea is that bishop g5 loses the entire purpose. So why do you want to play bishop g5? I mean, I'll just play bishop e7, you take, I take. I still control the square. So something like knight e5, let's assume... Yeah, knight e4 is not so clear, probably because of some bishop g2 ideas, but let's assume knight e5 is possible. So I'll just take it here. Take. Prepare bishop e6. So that's the fight for the d5 square. But the thing is, here, it's not so easy... Uh, yeah, Kostark, I see it's scary to play with a weak pawn on d6, but this is why you should rely on your activity. But here's the thing, for white, it's very difficult to get a complete domination on the d5 square with quite a few pieces. Uh, Vincent, it depends, it really depends. Sometimes you can even make a short castle, something like h4, g4, short castle. This is fine. This is okay, the king is safe, it's safe. So h4 is quite a tradi traditional idea. In the worst scenario, you're just sacrificing the pawn on h5 and you're relying on quite a lot of activity. But what I wanted to show is the idea that quite a common motive is to challenge the knight's position on d5. Okay, I missed bishop g5. Wanted just to show the idea. Is the typical idea of rook c5. And white never keeps the d5 outpost. So this is quite quite important stuff. So white cannot really easily do this. He cannot just easily grab the control of the d5 square. And this is going to be quite a big uh, struggle about the d5 square. And black at the same time is looking for activity. He has limited white's possibilities to go for a pawn march at the king side and he is looking forward at some hostilities at the queen side so let's say here after a4 which is a reasonable move because we want to play b5 bishop b7 and b4 right let's say white plays something like this i play b5 white plays something like this i play bishop b7 white plays something like i don't know maybe a4 b4 95 yeah this looks reasonable so now we take, not sure, not sure with which piece, because it really depends on the position, I guess, with the knight. Include, I think, h4. Not sure again. Bishop e7, short castle, and focus at the king side. So something like f4, again, we're already familiar with the idea that we can try to get, after short castle, bishop f6, knight e5, quite a lot of activity, in the center. I mean, 
Of course, it's much, much more complicated than that because we need also to pay attention to what is doing our opponent, but those are the core ideas. For example, here, I'm not even obliged to take immediately on a four, right? I'll just, I'll just probably make a castle first because a five is something like bishop g5. And bishop g5 trade, knight of six looks, looks okay. Uh, wouldn't that open the middle? What do you mean, Tano? What do you mean, open the middle? But again, this 95 is a concession for white. Because white wants to um, control the d5 square with a piece. He doesn't want to position their pawn. Now, this position would be ideal for black if we would have the pawn on b7. With the bishop on c8, with the pawn on b7, we just play bishop e7, short castle, f5, do our stuff at the king side, and not worry about the pawn on b4. I don't understand your question, Tano said. So maybe this b5 sometimes can be substituted with a more careful b6. Short castle, Bishop e7, something like knight e5, we are happy to take, take bishop e7, and now there is no weakness on b4. I mean, depends on the line. So this is the, one of the common ideas and struggles in the Sicilian neither. Right, so here after h5, white might play something like bishop g5. <laughs> Is h5 really necessary? Probably not. I mean, probably you can choose something else, but h5, h5 is just a traditional uh, signature move in the Sicilian neither. Again, let me explain you. If you play something simple, let's say bishop e6, the problem is g4. Now, this is a big problem. So g4, how do you stop it? How do you stop g5, bishop g2, f4, etc.? All of your pieces are going to feel passive here. So you play something like h6. Yeah, I, I stopped the g5 from happening. It is necessary. It is necessary because you'll be lacking active uh, game plan. So white controls totally the d5 square. So something like, I don't know, bishop e7, bishop e3. I could put the same setup. Let's say, not sure. I mean, maybe. Maybe I can just play short castle as well and consider to play a four. And I mean, there's so many great ideas. No, you cannot play plus d5. You cannot play for d5. That's the thing. That's the thing. Uh, scurry cannon. Because here, after g3, bishop, uh, I'm sorry, bishop e6, bishop g, you'll never get to play. I'm sorry, not h5. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You have no time to play d5. D5, E takes, Knight E5, Bishop G2. Now this is solidly worse. This is solidly worse. So Knight C3, Queen takes, takes Knight C3. I do understand that many people think that in the Sicilian Knight of, one of the two common ideas for black is to push either D5 or B5. But in reality, sometimes when you're pushing D5, you're just opening the position for your opponent. Uh, the second idea you mentioned, uh, b5, b4. Yeah, yeah, you have some counter play, I don't argue. Something like here, here, b5. Um, let's say I'll play something like, probably short castle. Yeah, I mean, short castle is possible. I could go for more aggressive long castle, but let's say I'll make a short castle here. And now after b4, since you played b5, I guess it makes sense to play b4. Knight e5 takes, takes, here. Now compare this position. You have lost so much time. Something like short castle, uh, I don't know, knight e5. Looks, looks terrible. Where is your queen side? No, 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 scary. I... I'm telling you what's what's the good stuff. I mean, th this is the reason. This is the reason why H3 start to become quite popular 
And this is the reason why h5, not only here, not only here, but in the English attack is uh, almost a must. I know you're concerned about the g5 square, you're concerned about the h5 weakness, but the thing is, for white, it's not easy to exploit it. So how do you play here for white? So something like, again, uh, let's say g3, g3, knight d7, here. What if the bishop doesn't take the knight on f6? Doha, da Dave, which moment are you talking about? So this is one of the typical ideas here in uh, in the line of the h3. So white is still aiming for control of the d5 square. Uh, bishop c4 is not so easy because let's say white is trying to solidify the position, but very easy it's organize a break through i'm sorry d5 queen b6 rook a8 there are many ideas no no scorikano it's not against h3 it's not i can totally guarantee you that against the h3 system it's not good what you're mentioning about what you're mentioning about is this setup yeah here i do agree yeah this is a great setup which you're mentioning about yeah so e5 either yeah probably here bishop e6 97 yeah, yeah sure sure either this or this or this all of this i already explained but after h3 this is something we want to avoid because for the reasons that the bishop is located on g2 controls the long diagonal and your attack at the king side is queen side is slow but again guys <laughs> who am i to tell i mean uh, just just play what you want right i'm just trying to advocate for something good uh, you don't have to play. You don't have to play if you don't like it. I just uh, I just explain. Uh, play what you feel comfortable. It's totally fine. Because that's the beauty of chess. We have different tastes. We like different ideas. For somebody, uh, something like h5 feels great move. For, for another thing, this is a ridiculous move, right? I mean, just play how do you feel it's best. I'm just saying from a really... Uh, uh, challenging approach that h5 in many uh, Sicilian other uh, setups is the most aggressive way to stop a white's kingside pawn advancement. That's it. That's it. If you're happy with other setups, just go for it. Right. So another idea, for example, when the same idea might work. Just a second. I'll try to find it. For example, ah, just a second. I think I didn't explain you. I think I didn't explain you this this moment after knight b3. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there is also knight b3. Quite a rare move. After bishop e7, bishop e3, bishop e6. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. About these types of positions. When white plays f4, you are not obliged to take. It really depends. After knight b3, h5, um, oh, that's actually a very good question. After knight b3, h5, now that's... You know... Nobody plays like that. That's a very valid question. I think the reason, I think the reason is the placement of the knight. Because, because why want, why white positions the knight on e2? So again, let me explain. White plays g4, bishop g2, knight e5, knight c3. Knight c3, you see. White is fighting for the control of the d5 square. Um, here after knight b3, this already is signaling that white is going for something else. So, I mean, maybe it is possible to play h5. Nobody really has tested it as far as I know. h5. 
Now, what if I go for bishop g5? Yeah, this line I didn't explain in the other line. Bishop g5, bishop e7. No, this is, yeah, I should have, I should have started with this line. I should have started with this line. Um, just a second. So after e5, knight e2, and h5, there is this alternative of bishop g5, which bears the repetition of a drawish line. So this is when two competitive players are playing. And with black, is a very good GM. So if white plays bishop g5, this very often signals, okay, white wants to draw. Because in, in many lines, uh, bishop g5 ends with drawish lines. The point is, now white takes on f6, plays knight e5, plays knight c3, gets a nice control of the d5 square. But black has seemingly active bishop. Okay, knight a4 is not so good. And this line is considered to be... Yeah, maybe. I mean, I th you know, I think the reason, the reason is the placement of the knight. That here, after knight b3, is that after h5, bishop g5, white can aim for a simple positional approach. I mean... If you ask me, probably h5 is also possible here. I just want to say that nobody really plays like that. But the reason is why here nobody plays g4. Now that's a I think the I think the answer to this question lies to the fact that the knight cannot be rerouted here. I think so. So the knight is already placed here. I mean, you could play g4. Who is stopping you? But I can play h6. Bishop g2, and now try to employ the ideas which were discussed before. And here the knight on b3 clearly feels misplaced. Uh, it should have been on e2. Because I could play knight g3, knight f5, h4, g5, and try to organize an attack at the, queen, uh, at the king side. On b3, it's not doing much. So, it's like, when you're playing knight b3, you're aiming for a different setup. And, again, who is stopping you to mix two setups in one? I mean, of course you can do that, but 9b3 pretty much signals for a different approach, which is bishop e3 and either queen f3 or queen d2, and long castle. So this is why nobody really here plays h5, because g4, knight e2, knight g3 is not a problem. But, if you're asking me, can h5 be played? Probably can. Yeah, probably can. Why not? So, bishop e7 is the main move here. Bishop e3, bishop e6. I just want to show you this line. Queen f3 is the main move. <laughs> yeah, maybe Noam, who is stopping you? Sure. There's many, many ways how you can improvise. Uh, but I wanted to say here is after f4, it really depends where a position his opponent's pieces. One of the core ideas here, black can either take on a four and immediately push in the center. And if he can do that, very often this leads to a great position, but it, it depends where white pieces are published, uh, where white pieces are uh, positioned. Another idea is to play knight c6, knight e5, knight e7 as played in Anand against Kasparov game, which is quite a traditional idea in the Sicilian Nidorf. But although the problem, there is a problem. Once you're going to position the knight on e5, white will position the knight on, on f5. And g6, yeah, probably you can still go for this line. But what I wanted to explain here is another idea, is that sometimes you can just ignore. Yeah, queen c7 is also possible. It is possible here. It is possible. Queen c7. Uh, with the idea to play bishop, uh, bishop c4. Yeah, some people play like that. But this is considered to be weak, uh, a much weaker move. Because after takes, takes queen f3, followed by either long castle or g4, g5. I mean, if you don't play d5, then you're totally cramped. For example, something like, um, I don't know, 
maybe 97 g4 h6 h4 yeah i guess you have to okay here here it works apparently it works d5 which is thematic idea in the sicilian neither but in general it's considered to be not great but what i wanted to show you is this idea that after f4 knight d7 and f5 there might be a time for takes takes and strike now this is a common motive e takes and bishop b4 now those are the common ideas how black is seeking some activity maybe i already mixed up the line but that's the idea and you're uh, threatening to regain the pawn on d5 and get a, a great game but again if you don't play d5 you're just strategically busted that's it i mean you have to play d5 and this comes together this comes together with the entire setup i mean you cannot play bishop e6 f4 knight b7 f5 take on b3 and then oh, okay i won't play d5 i'm concerned if i lose the pawn i'll play something else it's already too late you don't do that so you have to decide it earlier so here you still have a choice you still have a choice between maybe this queen c7 i don't know yeah but i think takes takes is probably more interesting and either immediately d5 or knight c6 queen e2 you still leave the option to play d5 or something like knight e7 and knight e5 and bishop g5 again this is one of our dream positions maybe i misplayed it but that's the that's the point so we are aiming for a dream position with the knight on e5 against a bad bishop on f1 we want to exchange a pair of knights we don't mind to exchange bishop for the knight as long as we are getting a beautiful knight against a bad bishop that's it so common motive uh but finally we are getting to queen f3 knight e7 long castle and about these positions when you're playing Sicilian knight uh, quite often the black king remains in the center for the time being so if you play something like short castle you're asking for trouble because after g4 so g5 is a problem so you'll play something i don't know in order to defend it you'll play something like knight b8 g5 97 h4 bishop h3 95 it's already clear something is wrong where is your game what are you doing here why does attacking and black has not even developed and that's the reason why very often black is not rushing with short cuts and actually here if you look at this position i think h5 is also possible here i mean why not looks completely fine h5 something like queen c7 maybe even long castle why not i mean you're stopping the uh, king's side advancement so this h5 idea is quite interesting and possible to employ uh whenever you feel yeah but what i wanted to mention here here is the traditional idea to sacrifice the exchange and i think at every single moment when your opponent has castled long and you have the opportunity to sacrifice on c3 to double his pawns on c3 and the king is already at the queen side even if you don't win the pawn on e4 this is a great position already just sacrifice without thinking yeah h6 is a mistake so right rook takes on c3 b takes <laughs> the thing is now you can just play position on chess and this position i can totally um back it with personal experience is incredibly difficult position to play with white so i i don't know what to do here for white so something like yeah h6 was necessary to keep the knight on f6 so that we are fighting for the e for d5 square but let's say i'll play something i don't know let's say king here yeah king here queen c7 i'll play here i'll make a castle you'll try to start a big attack takes takes 
Knight b6 is a traditional idea. Either knight a4 or knight c4. How to play here for white? I mean, I'm totally clueless. So king a1 maybe, knight a4, rook d3 something, rook c8, knight c3, uh, try to get the queen to a4, just checkmate. I mean, this is, this is a nightmare. But again, I mean, don't overdo with this exchange sacrifice on c3. I think I think this this is a in general a great idea most occasions only if white has made a long castle and you can double the pawns. If the king is still in the center or castle short, I think you need to get at least one pawn on e4 to make it work. I hope I managed to explain the idea. So this rook takes on c3 is just an easy uh, positional sacrifice for a long term initiative. And when you already played this, uh, just a second, white is absolutely losing control of the central squares. Yeah, it, it's a great sacrifice. I mean, I know for some people, for some people, it's it's difficult to do this. Uh, I know there are many people are, are out there who are afraid to sacrifice or afraid. Yeah, similar to dragon. Who are afraid to sacrifice exchanges, sacrifice pawns, sacrifice material because they're concerned they'll lose. I totally agree with that. I was exactly like that when I was younger. But you can always lose. I mean, there's always going to be risk. And it's important to remember. I mean, we are not playing pawns, right? <laughs> we are not playing pawns. We are not keeping the material at all times. We are not... I mean, we should be uh, open to sacrifice. This is the game of chess. And a game of chess, sacrifices is a quite a common motive. No, 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 not bishop b3. I, I love this bishop. I love this bishop. This is a terrible knight. And one of the most important things here is that you get an easy outpost on a4 and c4 for your knights. Chess quack, you love this position for both sides. I hate this position for white already. I mean, imagine here. I'm sitting here for white. Now, what's my plan? So this is the most important thing. So what's my plan here? What I'm supposed to do here? Because I see that black is threatened to play queen c7, short castle, rook c8, knight b6, knight, you name it. I mean, there's so many attacks, so many ideas. What am I supposed to do here? I mean, just the only idea that comes to my mind is try to checkmate. But with what? Two pawns? I'm missing this knight on d5. So this is why it was such a great positional sacrifice. All right, let me move forward. Let me try to show you more. And um, just a second. For example, I'll show you a great game in the Sicilian night of <laughs> yeah, English attack, super popular line. This is still by today one of the most popular lines in the sicilian this game yeah black gives advantage for the computer gives advantage after rook takes on c2 you're right you're right this game was played between veselin topalov and hikaru nakamura two sicilian knight of experts so f3 f3 is typically already uh, um Signaling that white wants to play bishop e3, queen d2, long castle, g4, g5. Uh, what's the line there? I don't know, either h4 or f4. And immediately bishop e3 runs into knight g4. This is a big theory. So this is why white plays f3. e5 is seemingly the most popular move, although I've seen quite, quite a lot of uh, games after e6, the quiet move g4 and what was it was it 97 i don't remember really <laughs> i don't play this line so again 97 bishop i don't think it was bishop e7 and focus at the game at the queen side and don't give any targets for white at the king side but anyway i'm gonna focus on e5 bishop e6 so here black already is thinking about d5 but here's the thing now, if you have, again, if you know some basic ideas of the Sicilian knight, you know 
that one of the core ideas in the Sicilian knight of is black wants to play either d5 or b5, and he's happy. <laughs> it's not so simple. So now you could play d5 and seemingly be happy. But this just opens the position. Takes, takes. Um, what is it here after bishop takes c4? Here, takes, here, knight c5. Another question is, why should black be happy here? What is he happy about? So, did we play d5? Um, for what? Why did we play d5? Just to free the bishop on f8? This is a bad position. So, not always those general rules, they apply to every single position. So we can play d5, but we won't. And here is a crossroads, some very big theory here. Uh, the main move here, as far as I'm concerned, is knight bd7, queen d2, bishop e7, and there we go. There we go. There's a very big theory. g4, b5, g5, b4 totally crazy 92 98 f4 a5 f5 a5 <laughs> but i think the modern theory says 94 that here white is better at least i have not seen this this line in practice for quite some time there was quite some, some high level games at some moment i think it was what was the line here b3, king b1, b takes, knight c2, bishop b3. I mean, this this is just a ridiculous line, some engine line. Takes here. And I don't remember, was it rook a5 or rook a4? What was the best here? I mean, if somebody already knows this line so far, this was a top level line played between the highest level GMs in the world. Crazy, crazy line. And again, um... That is the reason. That is the reason why I don't play the Knight of on a regular basis at the GM level. Because I don't want to study these openings up to 25th move. And if I miss something, I'm losing. <laughs> yeah, I, again, at the club level, there's no danger. I mean, hardly everybody, uh, anybody studies the theory up to move 25, every single line. Uh, why not short castle? What do you mean? Here for white? Here, I already made the short castle. So, but uh, since this is considered to be, I think so, at the moment, slightly dangerous, although at the club level, it's okay. Guess what? What I'm going to recommend. <laughs> Again, h5. The same idea. And this, this line, this um, game will be played between Topolov and uh, Nakamura. Oh, thank you, Tokana Plan X uh, for your sub. Thank you, thank you. Hope you like the content. So H5 again is the same idea. And we are stopping this G4, G5 idea again. I mean, like I said, you, you can play. You can play 97, Bishop E7. Nobody's stopping you. Yeah, there's this G4, B5 g5 maybe there there's still also knight h5 knight b6 b4 I mean, this is very big theory very big theory but i'm just telling you from professionals uh, perspective h5 is considered to be <laughs> this is the top the top move the top move and this particular game uh between topolov and nakamura i'll show you thank you to Plaxe. thank you yeah so I'm going to show you how black completely outplayed the former world champion. So Nakamura is playing with black. 95. Again, 95 is not necessary immediately. But again, what do you do here? So what do you do here? If you're white, imagine yourself. If you're in white shoes, what do you do here? <laughs> no, 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 not so quickly. So let's say I play queen d2. 97. Long castle. Rook c8. By the way, queen of two is already, you already know the motive. Boom. Easy. Easy stuff. You already recognize some ideas. We doubled the pawns. Yes, h5 is a common idea. 
So let's say I'm doing something. I'm doing something. I don't know. I try to make g3, a3, g4 work. I'll play here. Um, I don't know. Bishop e7 maybe. It's a good move. h3, b5, rook g1, knight b6, g4. Hooray! We managed to achieve g4. Take. Or oh, maybe I don't need to take. I don't know. And push b4. Knight b1. Do you like this position? Do you like this position? So this is a very basic question. So what have you achieved at the king side? This feels like a nightmare. I mean, there is no game. So that's the point why black is going for this. This h5 idea. He is going for this to stop all of your intentions at the king side. And the same applies for h3. I mean, it's exactly the same. Black is stopping this uh, pawn advancement. And one of the core ideas for white is to play 95 sooner or later. Because there's just nothing else. I mean, I could play theoretically maybe something like g3, f4. Yeah, but then what? I'll just ignore. What are you going to do? Play 5? So 95 is uh, considered to be... Um, Historical context. I don't know the historical context. Right. So, 95. This idea is played in many order of the moves. For example, queen d2, long castle, 95. Or bishop e2, short castle, 95. But it always comes down to the 95. So, 95. Now, about this position. Yeah, it is hybrid. So, 95. About this position is, in general... In general, you want to take with the bishop, although there might be some occasions when you will take with the knight. So, for example, knight e5, e takes, and bishop e5. Yeah, there are some possibilities when you can do that. Yeah. But here, bishop takes, g6, and we are already aiming for our dream position. Our dream position is this. I want to trade the bishops. I want to position the knight here. Maybe I'll be happy to trade the pair of knights. And that's it. I'm left with a beautiful knight against a bad bishop. It's not still clear, probably. Um, 95 before white's queen d2. I'll tell you honestly, Chesquak, I don't understand those uh, nuances really. I mean, what's the order, uh, difference of the order here? So, for example, queen d2 here, long castle, uh, something like queen c7. Why now 95 is sober and there it's not so good? I'll tell you honestly, I've not studied it so much so that I don't understand those uh, nuances so well, but... All I know is that 95 is a traditional idea in many setups, as white is hardly having anything else. Oh, okay, so let's go back to this game. So bishop e2 was played, queen c7, and now I want to show you this idea. Yeah, so this idea, now watch this. So topple of played c4. I mean, this is a reasonable idea, right? I want to play short castle. I want to play knight a5, by the way is a core idea, b4, play rook c1 and play c5. This is when Nakamura played a5, stopping this idea to position the knight on a5. Actually, this makes me ask, was it possible to play knight a5 immediately? Yeah, I guess it was. And can you guess the next move for black here? I'll, I'll, you, I'll give you a possibility to find the best move here. How do you trade the bishops? Because the bishop on e3 is quite annoying. You want to get rid of it. One of the core pieces in the position. So those who already guessed... Yeah, knight g8. <laughs> yeah, knight g8, that's it. Nah. So c4, bishop h6, um, I don't know, maybe b4, takes, takes, 
uh, knight e7, king f8, king g7, f5, knight f6. Now, this is already a great position. Yep. This is the modern stuff at its best, this knight g8. And this is one of the core ideas in, in these kinds of positions that uh, black wants to play uh, trade his bishop. So white is stopping him, knight e7 first, because we need to develop some pieces occasionally. c4, I mean, instead of the c4, there's other moves, I just want to show you this idea. Yeah, big hole on d4. a5, here, and now comes the big move. A4, trade queens, queens are gone, and now we just trade the bishops. We just don't even need knight g8 anymore. After the trade, king e7, no need to castle anymore. Knight c5, knight is rerouted. This is a strategic collapse by Topolov. I don't think I've ever seen um, a player of the highest level getting so positionally crushed with white. Yeah, the game, the game ended with a draw. But this is a complete, uh, complete uh, demonstration of Black's possibilities. Yeah, that's that's a great concept. This was Topolov against Nakamura. It's not really uh, Topolov Nakamura. Yeah. So again, again, it all started with h5. We're stopping the advancement of the kingside pawns. Knight e5, again, I'll tell you honestly, I don't understand those differences between queen d2, long castle, knight e5, or bishop e2, short castle, then knight e5. But knight e5 is a common motive. Yeah. So take with the bishop, play g6, play f5. Uh, somehow he messed up. Somehow he messed up. It, it happens. It happens. Trade the queens, trade the bishops, and get the perfect perfect knight. That's it. Complete domination. I'll, I could show you my own game from this line when I misplayed and I positioned a bishop. I, I mean, I, I traded the knights. Uh, just a second. I think I have it here. It's from the 2012... World Chess Olympiad. A team ladder was playing against the uh, national team of Cuba. Again, I play the same setup. E5, knight b3, bishop e6, here, 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 here. So actually, this was the time when h5, back in 2012, it was only getting popular. At least as far as I remember. Maybe, yeah, I think they used to play it before, but... I was making my first steps in the Sicilian Nidor for the time, and I figured this is a great, uh, great line. So here, after knight e5, I took with the knight. Yeah, probably it's better to take with the bishop. Uh, just a second. Yes, mama, what are you... Uh... That's an excerpt of the line. Listen, tell me, uh, send me please to the uh, whisper. I'll check it later. Yeah, it's a prophylactic move. Nicely put. Yeah, Scurry Cannon. That's a prophylactic move. Exactly. That's what it is. You're stopping the advancement at the king side. So, knight e5 was played. Yeah, so here I'm not so sure. So, again, I could take, take, and play g6. With the same idea to play knight g8 and bishop h6. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, this is a theory here. But ah, I think I remember now. I think I remember what was the difference. The difference was that if I'm playing, if I'm playing something like let's say long castle bishop e7, then after knight d5. Takes, takes. I obviously cannot trade the bishops anymore. So this is all about the order of the moves. So it's really, really tricky. So if I'm playing with black, I want to avoid playing bishop e7 for some time. So I want to play some useful moves. Something like queen c7, king b1, uh, maybe 
rook c8 makes sense because this is a useful move. And if white plays knight e5, then I can think about takes, takes, and g6, but does it even work? I don't know. Rook c1, knight g8. Not sure. Looks like a risky, to be honest. Maybe white can actually play something like g4, bishop h6, g5. <laughs> oh, this is complete cosmos already. Hello, g5 Congress. So, of course, it's much, much bigger than that. There's a lot more bigger tier, but this is the core idea. So what I play there, how old? I'm 37. I started to play chess at age 9. So this was my game against one of the leading Cuban GMs, Quezada, Perez Yonesky. Very strong GM. I took with the knight, played bishop f5, here, here, and here. Uh, this is the core idea. White wants to play b4, c5. This is why knight is positioned on a5. And I just mix two ideas. Yeah, it works. It definitely works. I just mix two ideas. I had to play here bishop e7. Bishop e7, short castle, and bishop f6. I play e4. I mix two ideas. I play g6 because I was supposed to play g6. Played bishop g7, played short castle, and played e4. And I was very, very happy because I figured that I'm going to trade on f3. I'm attacking the rook. Let's say if he's going to play here, I'm just going to take here, here, knight e5. It's okay position. I like my pieces. And then came the shocker. <laughs> yeah, he played a four. He played a four and I realized I cannot really take the exchange. Because if I take it, it's so difficult to defend against h3, g4. Knight b3, knight d4. I'm just lacking any counterplay. I mean, not mated on the spot, but this is a nightmare strategic position. I mean, I have no plan. I mean, I have the exchange, but so what? I mean, what can I do here? So I didn't take it. I played something else. Somehow I was holding here. Yeah, but this was worse. Okay, not going to show you that more. Uh, Cuban, no, no, no. Quezada Perez. Yunieski Quezada Perez, one of the leading... Uh, Cuban Grandmasters, very strong, over to 600. Um, yeah, very shortly, I'll show you also, in just a second, just a second, let me try to find it. There's so many games I want to show you. Um, okay, this one. So let's go back to the bishop g5 setup. No, I lost. I lost. I mean, not necessarily always the opening reflects the end of the game. I mean, the end of the game doesn't re reflect the results in the opening, but like I already explained, I misplay the opening. Um, no. So here, let's go back to this position. And I wanted to briefly mention bishop g5 because I didn't show you anything after bishop g5. Uh, bishop g5 is one of the most played continuations. So I'll very briefly, just a second, uh, very briefly, I'll show you what I know there. Ah, just a second, just a second. So bishop g5. Um, here, by far, yeah, 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 sure. e6, e6 is the so far most popular move. I stopped pl to play e6 for a basic reason. After e6, f4, um, knight d7. Queen of three. Ah, oh, just a second. I think I. There was this line. I wanted to show you. Just a second. Which game was it? 
Give me, give me a minute. Here, here, here. Okay, uh, this is the wrong game. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Sorry, sorry about that. I have so many games that it's so difficult to navigate through them. They look the same. This is the game between Vasily Ivanchuk against uh, uh, Veselin Topalov. So again, Bishop G5. And uh, what I started to dislike about this line, for example, after knight bd7, queen c7, and I cannot really play b5, of course, if I'm happy with the draw. It leads quite uh, to quite sharp lines, which is supposedly a theoretical draw. e5, here, boom. Boom, boom, and here we go. Uh, would you believe it or not? This ends with a draw. No, 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 h5 doesn't work here. Now, this is some total craziness. And when I was, uh, yeah, it escalated very quickly, but this is a draw. Would you believe it or not? This is already a proven draw. And I, I didn't want to play this as black because if I, first, I cannot achieve more than a draw against my opponents. And, uh, and the second thing is, I have to remember every single precise move. And uh, when I'm when I'm choosing between openings, where I have to remember quite a lot of moves, and where I have to remember, yeah, land of mines, I like that. Or I have to choose between um, structure-based opening. I'll choose the structure-based opening. But again, but again, guys, I'm talking about the GM level here, GM level games. You have to remember so a lot, so a lot, and you're playing and. You make one wrong move, that's it, you're gone. You did not even make a single move. I mean, your opponent didn't even make a single move and you're losing the game without a fight. But again, at the club level, this is not a risk. So the reason why I didn't, uh, why I discarded this line is that after b5, there's e5. Structure-based, uh, Tamanov. Cecil and Tamanov is one of my favorites. I'm using uh, neither of as uh, alternative. You know, I think, I think you can play up to 2400 with just some basic preparation in the neither. I mean, again, it really depends against who you're playing. But uh, against a very well-prepared GM, I wouldn't dare to play neither probably with black. If I, pre if I expect that my opponent is caught off guard, he is not expecting of me the neither. He's not really a deep theoretician. I'll just play the neither. Because I know I'm not in danger. I can always improvise. Against a deep expert, I will not dare to play it. So I'll play it time on off. Time on off, yeah. I already had a bootcamp about time on off, so uh, <laughs> not gonna talk about that. Yeah, so this escalated very quickly and 96 leads to a sharp line, which ends in a draw. And uh, I did not really like the alternative here. Which is just a second. Yeah, so after bishop e7 here, here, here. G4. I was analyzing this line a long, long time ago with my students. This is the main move. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah, b5. Here, here. Sacrificing the pawn. Bishop g5 is already proven. I think that it's worse. So, short castle, f6, now try to, now here's the thing, you have to make, yeah, you have to make a million only moves to survive. One move. <laughs> no, hi Leon, no, no, I haven't mentioned. Takes, knight c6, I think this already was the only move, only move. Only move. And around here, yeah, it's very, very easy to misplay. Now, I mean, this is this is crazy stuff. And one of the reasons why I wouldn't dare to play this against a very well very, very well prepared opponent. But this leads us. Ah, was it there? I don't remember. Maybe I shortly mentioned it. But this is the reason why. I'm not playing this, because the real alternative, at least for me, 
the way I treat is the poison pawn variation. I'll tell you honestly, I'm not mad. I, I don't want to study this. This is for top, top theoreticians. Queen b6 leads to super sharp lines, and it's good. It's a great opening. It's a great line. Even if Giri plays it, it probably already proves that this is playable line. So the point is, after queen d2, queen takes on b2, rook b1, queen a3. Uh, yeah, it's good, it's good. Yeah, there's many moves. There's e5, there's f5. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy line. You sacrifice three pawns. White sacrifices are three pawns. And you make a single mistake with black. You're done. That's it. You're gone. Uh, so, so easy. But according with the engines, if you're capable to study these lines, it's absolutely good. Um, I've seen that some players avoid this with black. For example, Maxime Vashilograph, I've seen also him annotating some of his games. They include h6 first. So the reason after h6, and now he plays queen b6, is that there is no knight b3. Because there's queen e3 check. And queen d2 supposedly is not so great. I mean, this extra tempo somewhere helps. <laughs> Again, I don't know where really, because the, same, the game is so messed up. So crazy, but I mean, this, this extra tempo somehow helps for black. And anyway, I mean, this was a very, very long introduction to my experience with the Knight of, and I chose here something else. I'm going to show you to now, uh, show you this now. And I chose just a second, uh, try to find it. I mean, of course, everybody plays e6. I chose here knight bd7. So that is my uh, limited experience with the knight of. And the point is, I think it's rather tricky. It was quite popular some years ago. <laughs> yeah, I avoid, I avoid e6. I avoid these stuff, uh, these lines. And I'll show you one of the typical mistakes that unsuspecting white player might make here. So, for example, he plays f4. I mean, there's many moves. So let's let's try to aim for the typical approach. f4, queen c7, queen f3. Now here, the beautiful thing is I can play b5. I can do it. And after e5, this is a mistake. Bishop b7. There is no sacrifice on e6, as you can see. There's no pawn on e6. And after e takes on d6, very nice intermezzo, queen b6. And after queen e3, even more lovely, e6. e6, bishop d6, and black is simply better. Yeah, this is tricky. Yeah, this is tricky stuff. This is why I started to play this knight with d7. And, uh, and uh, after f4, queen c7, queen f3, b5, let's say white is not playing e5. Long castle. Bishop b7, bishop d3, seemingly, I mean, okay, now it's the time you transfer to e6, right? No. <laughs> no, we play g6. And when I when I started to study this, I really loved it. I really loved it. I, I mean, I have some, a few years old analysis in this line. I haven't checked what, what has changed here. And um, so we are playing some sort of a Dragodorf variation with the bishop on g7, where the bishop on g5 feels weird. So, for example, a sample line, knight d5, takes, takes, bishop g7, rook, uh, yeah, knight c6, bishop f6, and some craziness starts here. Ah, oh, wait a second, this is a game between Pierun against Jan Krzysztof Duda. Yeah, now I remember. They played it in the Polish championship in 2016, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Pierun was very well prepared. But there was a much more simple sample line after rookie one. Knight f6, knight c6, and e6. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Again, Leon, I already explained it. I won't play in the knight of against a prepared player. Definitely. So, 
I, I'm extremely picky when it comes to the professional level. Uh, at the professional level to play against uh, which opponent I carefully choose. Against who I'm playing the Nidor. I feel that my opponent is playing something weird. He's playing not the main stuff or the lines which I know really well. Okay, I'm playing the Nidor. It's okay. And it's element of surprise. As a regular weapon... No, oh, come on. I, I won't do this. I won't do this, really. So then you have to study the main lines with E6, Queen B6, the Poison Pawn variation. It's just not my style. But again, I already explained it a couple of times. For a club level, totally fine. I mean, this is absolutely fine. You can play all of this. So, of course, once or twice you'll run into a very well-prepared opponent, but um, hardly a deep opening expert up to move 30. Yeah, and this leads to equality. Uh, you played this only against Queen of... I mean, there's many moves. There's many moves here. For example, um, uh, there is uh, Bishop C4 quite as... Oh, look at this line. Bishop C4. Um, what was here? Queen B6. And here comes quite funny lines. Just a second... I'll try to remember the most ridiculous one. Short castle takes. Oh, just a second. It's not this one. Where was this? Queen b6. Queen d2. Ah, yeah, here it is. Queen b2. Here, here. Short castle e6, and now bishop d5. <laughs> insane, totally insane. But this I had analyzed. <laughs> it is scary. The entire knight of is scary. I mean, this is crazy stuff. As long as you have analyzed this, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, a3, queen b2, but the queen escapes. Yeah, but the queen escapes. I mean, it, it leads to some crazy lines. And again, if if I'm to play this against a GM who has long database, I forget it. I won't I won't venture there. But if I have to just uh, play at a club level against a player who is not prepared, who is not opening chess space, who is not expecting me to play this, who is not using engines, not using neural networks to find the best moves, yeah, then it's completely fine. So I checked this knight bd7 at the competitive level. It's a very rare guest. But again, I think it's a great weapon against people who don't know this and who are playing this f4, queen f3, long castle, the traditional stuff. And you are making this e7, e6 absence in your favor. But okay, normally probably the other serious alternative, if you don't want to study the poison pawn variation, probably is h6, yeah h6 and bishop queen b6 what was the line here i think the critical line was a3 ah just a second i think i have the game here yeah karyakin against maxima shiela graf just a second i'll put you up to this game yeah it is fun <laughs> it's totally fun so this is the game between sergey karyakin against maxima shiela graf uh, in 2017 London Chess Classic. Yeah, so Maxime played h6. This is the so-called delayed Poison Pawn variation. But again, you need to be really well prepared to play this. a3. Um, here. Yeah, that's the difference of including h6, bishop h4. That the bishop can retreat to f2. <laughs> yeah. And 97, b5, g4, here, here. Yeah, and again, I want to mention here a typical idea for the Sicilian neither is fight for the square on e5. So g5 is a common motive. Scurry Cannon is probably shocked now, right? Because he was already. Uh, concerned about the h5 now now comes g5 yeah so the g5 move is you want to fight for the outpost on e5 95 97 bishop f6 and it leads to some craziness 
h4 takes g5 here 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 etc 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 okay not going to show you that just wanted to show you this maneuver the g5 is a common idea um all right what else ah i think i wanted to show you this game so i mean my own experience is neidorf well uh, most well works against unsuspecting players <laughs> yeah even if you check the games at the highest level yeah black is not really scoring so well i mean even these old experts in the neither when they're playing against each other most of the occasions white is still winning because they already know it quite a high level don't they okay so this is one of my games so bishop g5, knight bd7, um, bishop c4, one of the most annoying lines. And again, here the point is, um, I knew I'm risking here slightly. But again, I'm suspecting that my opponent probably doesn't know all of those weird lines. Because I played neither as a surprise. I mean, I'm mostly Sicilian Tamano player. And uh, I just didn't want to play the time on, of, on this particular day. So I decided, okay, I mean, it's fun to test the neither. So I play queen b6. Yeah, bishop b3, this already signals that my opponent probably doesn't remember much. And e6. Now about the e6 move. I think I'll briefly explain this from the fisher souls variation with bishop c4. Not including bishop g5. What you have to be careful is not to blunder any sacrifices on e6. So this is a common motive. For example, something like here. Bishop e6 doesn't work. Takes knight e6, followed by knight d5. But here, after something like... Yeah, so something like knight c5 or knight e5, this knight doesn't hold there. You're easily you're easily getting rid of it. But again, you probably are very careful to play it here. Now, this is where I'm not so sure. Because this is going to be with the tempo. Although well, probably still fine. Yeah, queen b6, knight e5, takes, takes, and knight e5. Yeah, I just trade the, trade the knight. It's not a big deal. But you just need to watch out from this sacrifice. Yeah, after bishop e7 it works. Uh, yeah, that, that's the common idea. Now, this is a common mistake. Now, this is a very big mistake. Takes, takes, knight e6, queen b6, and knight g7. This is a terrible position for black. You don't want to do this. But this is going to be more common in the fisher souls in attack. Maybe I should have started with that, but okay. So, bishop g5, knight e7, bishop c4, queen b6, here. And quite typical to the fisher souls in attack, we want to get rid of the bishop b3 as quickly as possible. So e6. Here, still no bishop e6 because the queen is gone from the d8 or c7 square. Knight c5. And about this position, I would like to slightly mention... Although we played knight c5 with clear intentions to trade the bishop on b3. Now, beautiful thing is, we don't have to. We don't have to take on b3 right away. And this is what uh, sometimes club level players, they don't understand. Yeah, I mean, they don't understand. I mean, I mean if I played knight c5 with intentions to play knight x on b3, why don't you take it now? Uh, the biggest reason why we played knight c5 is to neutralize the bishop on b3. And neutralize the idea uh, to sacrifice on e6. We have done that. I mean, the knight on c5 also guards the e6 square. So, I mean, the knight can remain for the time being on c5. Because, in addition, we are also targeting the e4 square. I mean, not only the bishop on b3, but the knight on e4. It's not going anywhere. It's, it's going to remain there. So queen c7, we just go back with the idea to play b5. 
here, here, here. Quite a common idea in the Sicilian Niler fight for space advantage at the king side. Here, here, here. Now, black already is thinking about the ideas not to trade the bishop, but conquer it. And after something like a3, with the idea to escape the bishop, probably we are already happy to take. Probably. h6, g6, here. I just want to show how this game progressed. Black never even took the bishop. A mix of the Sicilian neither. The king is feeling safe at the king side. Now we can try to go bother this bishop. And finally we made through with a traditional push in the center of d6 d5. Yeah, this is a complete domination for black. And uh, I managed to score uh, a convincing win. Again, let's go back shortly so that you understand every single moment. First, we need to make sure we are not sacrificing, we are not missing any sacrifices on e6. Then we are threatening to trade the bishop, but most importantly, we are keeping it under the pressure. Now we are preparing to play b5, b4. There's probably room for improvisation. Probably. I mean, maybe you can play h6. Yeah, stop the g5 from advancing. Uh, another traditional idea for white, if the rook was defended, is white wants to play g6, h takes, h takes, and get to the e6 square. So this is again one of the reasons why we are playing knight b6, because we are protecting the e6 square. Because we also have the bishop here in c8. And already thinking about b4, a5, a4. Yeah. So h6 is a bad move. Yeah, that's just a bad move because it's now closing the king side and now we can safely castle. I could already castle here, but fighting for space advantage is always important. This is more space, more space, first castle. This is not even possible because traditional idea of, I think so, d5, knight d3, discovered check, and the queen is lost. Oh, wait a second, I have a queen before, I think it was even a5, yeah, a5 and a4, I think so. Yeah, this, this was also quite great. So this pawn on b4 doesn't really matter. Yeah, but now let me show you this um, uh, fischer Sozen attack. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the boot camp, Bobby Fischer was the big, biggest expert of the so-called fischer Sozen attack. He used to play it exclusively. Yeah, bishop c4. And the idea is very simple. Uh, we are positioning the bishop, I mean, now I'm talking about white, on the diagonal a to g8, make a short castle, push f4, f5, 4, e5, play very aggressively in the center. Uh, this setup recently is pretty much out of commission. I mean, nobody playing, nobody is playing this. Uh, why? Because it's quite easy for black to get a good setup and very difficult for white to make a real break from the center. So, e6. Um, yeah, e6 is a good move. Yeah, a3, I just want to show you this idea. So, after short castle, b5, here. And again, we don't want to blunder the traditional idea after bishop e7, queen f3, and for example, knight bd7. Now, this is a nightmare. So, there's even e5. But what I wanted to mention is this idea. Now, this is something we don't... Oh, okay, it's knight e5. I think, I'm... I, think I mixed it up. Just a sec. I think I mixed it up. So, e6... Short castle b5 here. Let's say bishop b7. Yeah, bishop b7. Looks okay. Looks okay. Yeah, bishop b7, rook e1, bishop b7. We are looking all happy. 
and then comes the thunder. Boom. That's it. We're gone. Knight e6, knight g7, knight f5. I mean, this is it. This is game over. It did not even start. I mean, you don't want to blunder this sacrifice. So you need to be extremely, extremely careful. Yeah. You need to be extremely careful with the order of the moves here. So keep the control of the e6 square for the, for the time being. Don't develop your knight just yet. So bishop e7. Queen f3. Queen b6. With the idea that e5 will be met by bishop b7. Again, quite important resource. Another most difficult move is here. After bishop e3 is queen b7. Yeah, this is a difficult move. Because we are closing this potential diagonal to be opened. And we are preparing to play bishop d7 and knight c6. And also thinking about ideas at some near future to play b4. Here, here, here. Here, here. Now, bishop e6 is not a big threat. Because it's not attacking the queen with the tempo. And queen g7 is risky. And I think it's... Uh, just a second, what is here? I, I was thinking about knight g4, really. Yeah, I think so. Knight g4, if queen h7, the second knight goes here. Queen h3 and I don't know, something like, I was already happy to trade this knight, uh, this, this bishop here, but maybe there's even more, something like queen e4. Looks quite dangerous for, for white. Bishop b7, there are some problems, this queen is out of the game. f4 instead of queen c3? You mean queen f3? Yeah, I guess there is. F4. Ah, there was a quite a, quite a nice trick here. Just a second, I'll try to remember it. Castle, E5. Takes, takes, here. Um, Queen H5. Yeah, looks extremely dangerous. But if you know this move, then you're you're doing great. And knight c6 is met by queen b6. So that's a check. We are recapturing the piece. This is going to be a weakness on e5, bishop b7. As long as we are not missing any sacrifices on f7 and bishop e6, we are we are fine. Yeah, it is similar, only bishop g5 is not included. I mean, actually, I would say bishop g5 derives from this from this line. I mean, included with bishop c4. So again, e6, uh, just a second, short castle, b5, just be careful. You need to eliminate this bishop. Um, you mean here, f4? Yeah, probably it is possible. F4, castle, if I already showed. E5 takes, takes, knight d7, queen f3 maybe. Queen f3 and... Maybe I can just play queen b6. With the idea that queen a8 is met by bishop b7. So you cannot really take the rook. The queen is trapped. But again, now that I'm looking at this position, the queen f3 probably you can just sacrifice the exchange. Um, why knight c4, bishop c4 is less popular because uh, that's a good question. I I think that uh, uh, bishop g5, I mean, knight e7, like Leon here in the chat said, it's slightly risky, but at club level it works, perfectly works. It's very interesting. Try to avoid the e6 setups and name for the Dragdorf uh, setups, but uh, here the thing is. In attack, the bishop is on g5. In the fisher sozen attack, the bishop on g5. I don't think it ever gets there, does it? Just a second. Let me check it. Bishop c4. e6. 
Okay, so this is slightly a different setup. Now this is slightly different because in the yeah in in bishop g5 setups nobody plays bishop c4. Yeah, I know. I know it's slightly confusing. Slightly confusing. I mean, it's all about Hey, Sleepy Mario. Vladimirovich attack. What was it? I don't recognize. I mean, of course I know Vladimirovich, but what was the attack? Not hearing the audio. Okay. Okay. Uh, just a second. I want to show you some very nice, very nice sample games. Um, for example, these two highest level games in the Fisher Sozin line. Uh, this game was played between uh, Rustam Kasimjanov against Radoslav Wojtaszek. The same setup, the same bishop c4, um, e6. So Wojtaszek again follows the same idea. Short castle, b5. Yeah, about the b5. Um, very slightly I'm going to touch it. I think it's quite important to include the sooner the better. Because if white will play at later stage a3, and after b5, he's going to play bishop a2, you'll have slightly some problems to neutralize this bishop. Oh, no, I don't think I have it here in my analysis. So bishop b3 here, queen f3, queen b6 here, here. Yeah, this is the line which I already showed to you. Um, so this is the game between Kasimjanov against uh, Wojtaszek. Queen g3, b4, here, here f3 here, rook b8, yeah rook b8 is quite important not to miss any knight b6 ideas, for example knight e5 I think it's already a mistake, just a second, yeah there's knight b6, oh is there? oh maybe there is not there, I mean the point was this was my brilliant idea, and threatening with the mate and threatening to take the queen, but apparently there is a sufficient hook, that h5. Okay, not obvious. Ah, this I think I remember. This was in my analysis actually. Okay, I keep playing rook b8, a5, keeping the knight imprisoned, and just an easy game. Yeah, just an easy game for black. Everything is well protected, and they agree to draw. And uh, there was another game uh, between uh, Vladimir Kramnik uh, and Petr Swidler. So Kramnik here played bishop b3. Actually, this is the game from this year. They played in one of these uh, Magnus Carlsen online tournaments. So knight d7 going for the quick neutralization of the knight. All right, so guess what? What's, what's Swidler played here? What do you think? <laughs> you already can think of the answer. <laughs> so since you already accumulated some knowledge, what I try to explain to you, although slightly chaotic, I believe. <laughs> no, not B5. Not B5. Think, improvise. Improvise the way you understand the, the neither. Okay, the pawn is on e6, but does it change anything? It could have been on e5. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> h5. This this was played by Swidler. h5. We are stopping the pawn advancement at the king side. Queen d2, b5. There you go. Yeah. Bishop d7. Now I like this move very much. So bishop d7. The idea is to start the pawn advancement forward. Very aggressive, very interesting. King b1. And somewhere here, Swiller started to, mis, uh, to misplay it. Uh, he played queen c7, which probably was not a good move. There was opportunity to play queen b8. Not to jump under some temples. 
Sometimes the queen is well played on b8. He played queen c7, queen b7, and here. Uh, now the question is, you might ask, why not a5? I would like to stop here for a moment. Yeah, a5 is super, super tempting. And I don't think I explained this concept to you in today's bootcamp. The reason is this, is white has access to one of the two thematic peace sacrifices. Either knight d5 or bishop d5 or knight f5. I don't know which one is going to work right now. But this is something you always have to be careful. So if the king is standing on e8 and the white rook is standing on e1, something on f5, something on d5 very often flies in. So you just need to be careful. So for example, here after a5, now I'm guessing, I think it's knight f5. Knight f5. Let's say I'm taking the piece and bishop c5. This looks like a deadly attack. Bishop e7 and what is it? Queen d6. Although it's not so clear, is it? Queen d6, bishop e6. I don't know what is this. A rook e6, a rook sacrifice. I mean, some crazy attack. Maybe there was even something there. So there is even possibility to play knight, e, uh, knight f5. Maybe there is knight d5. Knight e5, e takes, e takes. Bishop e7. And there starts a big attack. So quite, quite difficult to defend against this. And more difficult to evaluate this. When you're sitting with black and you're seeing these ideas. You, are, you know they exist. So this is why Swidler here, he played... This was a rapid game, and he played bishop e7. He definitely recognizes the idea that white might play knight f5 or knight d5. And also Kramnik understands that he needs to do something in the center quickly. Otherwise, he is going to be overrun at a black's queenside hostilities with a5, b4. So he played bishop g5. And this game, it... It could easily be improved somewhere along the lines. And Swidler just played badly here. He played yeah, b4 right away. I don't like this move. Um, so he played b4, takes, takes. And after e5, d takes, rook e5. Kromnik got the better of the position. And even launched a very powerful knight e5. I'm sorry, knight e5, takes, takes. Something was miscalculated by... By Swidler here. Oh, Lord Enemy. Thank you. Thank you for your sub. Appreciate it. Hope you like the content. And uh, something was miscalculated here by Swidler. But I think here we could have done something better. So I'll allow you to answer what could have been improved by Swidler here. What do you think? What do you think? So imagine you're playing here with black, and again, h5. I mean, it's a super fun idea to play in various, um, in various uh, Cecil and Adolf ideas. No, <laughs> you play h5, h7. <laughs> yeah, that's the next move, right? Yeah, not playing h5. No, 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 no. H5 is a great idea. Play h5. I advocate play h5. <laughs> yeah, listen, I should have then, should have then uh, actually. Made the topic Sicilian Nether with h5. Yeah, I made a very, very uh, huge topic. Learned Sicilian Nether with black. I mean, two hours. I don't expect even to teach that. I just hope you'll get some grasp. Are oh, you never play? Ah, too bad, too bad. No, no, no. It's it's. Imagine yourself, Leon, with with white pieces. It's so difficult to counter this. I mean, it doesn't matter what engines are saying. A5, B4. Um, here a5, yeah, that's reasonable, but again, a5, I already explained, you'll run into either knight f5 or knight d5. So this is something you need to pay attention. So for example, I can choose between, now, now I can choose, here we go. I'll play knight f5, boom. <laughs> knight f5, takes, and 
Let me think. Probably just takes. 9b3. Okay, I'll include 9b3. Okay, I'll include 9b3. So knight f5, knight b3. Okay, but the engine for me it's easy to say. Knight e6 here, queen d6. <laughs> yeah, takes on d6. No, long castle. No, 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 long castle. Then you're dead. Don't make long castle here. I mean, you want to checkmate white on the queen side, not castle there. There is another opportunity here to play bishop d5. E takes uh, knight e5. Knight e5, e takes. This is also anything but clear. This is a crazy, crazy position. And again, you need to evaluate all of this when you're sitting here with black. You already know these ideas. They're incorporated in your thought process. You know there's 95, there's 95. And the most difficult thing, even for super GMs, like Swiddler, I mean, it's difficult to understand which threat is real and which is illusory. I mean, everything looks the same. Yeah, you just want to make sure you're not missing anything. Neither. What? This is neither. This is neither. <laughs> you requested neither. We are already discussing neither, Leon. So, what do you suggest here? I think it's a great idea. You're gonna love this. Oh, just a second. Not a five. Hey, Dixies. <laughs> Why not? Why not short castle? Now look at this position. H5 is a weakness. But how is white going to exploit it? And this is what I love about uh, these, these early H5 ideas. It, it looks weird. It look, looks so antipositional. But try to punish me immediately uh, for being played this H5. So for example, if I'm playing with white, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, now I'm going to punish you. I'm going to play, yeah, G4, G4, sure, G4. It makes sense. So g4, I'm going to ignore it. Yeah, no calculation. Also, I'm not calculating a5. Um, of course, the engine says there's knight f5. <laughs> I don't know what is knight f5. This is insane. No, 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 not knight f5. G takes, g takes, right? G takes, I push b4. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe take. Okay, this is already a mistake. Take. Knight a2, queen a7, someone is gonna get mated. Yeah, some knight e5. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So, something like so here the engine was saying g4, a5, g takes b4, knight d5, takes <laughs> 6. I mean, I'll tell you honestly. In these kinds of positions, the engine's evaluation doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, the first who is going to checkmate is going to take down the game. So it's a complete mess. But I think it makes sense from the black's perspective, any early H5. So this is something what you can keep in your mind. Asmiller lost the game. But I think he played great, the opening. He managed to confuse his opponent, his mighty opponent, Kramnik himself. Yeah, at least it's not Berlin. I like that. So that's the point. I mean, that's the point. As soon as you're seeing some setups with F3, F3 or H3 with intentions to play G4, G5, F4, I think it's a super fun way, either with the pawn on E5 or with the pawn on E6, just play H5. Just stop this before it's even happening. Then play like Swiddler did. Uh, bishop E7, Bishop D7. Okay, this could have been improved. Queen B8 maybe. Queen B8 maybe was more accurate. But okay, Queen C7 is okay. Queen B7, Bishop E7, even make a short castle. Yeah, looks completely fun. All right. Show you more stuff. Is there a line I haven't even briefly mentioned? Oh, yeah, there's Bishop E3. Yeah, there's Bishop E3. Um... Yeah, the bishop e3 line, which occasionally leads to the same setups. 
here. So bishop bishop e3, the idea is not always white wants to play f3. I remember this. <laughs> I was I was once having quite a funny game. I was um <laughs> ultimate tables. Oh just just some basic ideas. Just some basic ideas. Um I was uh I was having a long long time ago, something like oh, not so long time ago, something like four years ago. I was playing in a local rapid tournament. No, maybe three years ago. Yeah, maybe three years ago. A local rapid tournament in Latvia. And there was um, one of the special guests was Vladimir Fadosev. I mean, he already was 2700 level player. I was playing with White. And we had to play the first game in the morning, in the second day of the tournament. And he had prepared that I'm going to play some anti Sicilian stuff. <laughs> I surprised him. I played with White. I played the open Sicilian. I played bishop e3. He played knight g4. Uh, I played bishop c1. He played knight f6. I played bishop e3. <laughs> and guess what? What he played here? He played. Uh, what was it? Ah, just a second. I think he played. Instead of this, he played g6. Yeah. g6. Uh, what was the line here? No, just a second. He played something else. So the reason is he. Uh, no, I would say I don't remember. He played. I think it was knight c six. Ah, I should have. I should have searched for the game. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He repeated the repetition. He blundered very quickly. I took the pawn. I won the game quite easily. <laughs> and after the game, I asked him, "Why didn't you repeat the position?" So here. Uh, so after bishop bishop c1, knight f6, and bishop e3, why didn't you repeat the position? He said, I thought you wanted to draw. <laughs> I said, I, I didn't want to draw. I want to beat you. I'm, a, I'm having white, right? I just wanted to repeat the, repeat the position twice, give you the impression that I want to draw, <laughs> just play something else. So that's already quite a nice tactic that you can always employ when you're playing against nominally stronger opponent. Give them the impression. You want to play a draw, couple a couple of times repeat the position, <laughs> and then they just make something else, and that's it. All right. So anyway, I mean, I can always I can always switch to the f3 line, and then bishop e3 if I want to put up the same setup. But anyway, let me show you this uh, setup with bishop e3. So after bishop e3, just a second. Yeah, after bishop e3. Bishop g5 is the most uh, popular move. Bishop c1. Queen b6. No, there's no such move. Knight d5. You just, you're gone. No, 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 no. You're mixing up uh, Sleepy Mario or something. Yeah. So. Bishop g5 is the main move. Bishop h4 g5 here and here and in general you are happy you're happy to play knight c6 to fight for the control in the center and uh, for example there is one common idea very often missed at the club level bishop e2 h5 and h3 now, this is a very fun way how you can try to score some nice points. Because seemingly after knight b5, f3, bishop f2, queen d2, white is doing great. But here is a very nice pawn sacrifice. You play h4. And this is a common motive. h takes, h takes, 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 f takes, and knight c6. And this extra pawn, it doesn't matter. What matters is your bishop here. So after bishop g7, uh, there is many moves. I think the main move here is h3, knight e5, f3, knight c6. Typical ideas involve bishop e6, queen c7, long castle, etc. Quite, quite fun lines. Um, ah, just a second. I think I wanted to explain to you why. Why white is... 
<laughs> Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. Why white is um, keeping the bishop alive? And this is something what one of my students recently he made a mistake. Why don't white play queen d2? Now we are nearing to quite important moment here. You are just happy to take. take. However, here, the last thing you want to do, if I was also scurry cannon possible. However, here, the last thing you want to do is to play e5 now. Why is that? And this is what something, uh, something that some people don't understand. So while we are playing in the first place here, e5, either here, e5, or here e5 for example why are we playing here e5 it's very important that you understand the uh the concept you understand the idea why we are doing this we are not just doing this out of the spite that we can we weaken the d5 square i hope everybody understands you are pressuring the e4 pawn with the knight you're fixing it you are fighting for the d5 square, and most importantly, you are uh, slowing down white's pawn march at the king side. This is your idea. You want to play bishop e6, knight e7, b5, or knight e7, b5, bishop e7. Pressure this pawn as quickly as possible. Now, why this is important? After bishop e3, knight e4, queen, d, queen d2, knight e3, queen e3, there is no need to play e5 because what you're pressuring there you don't have the knight on f6 anymore you are not fighting for the e4 square you are just weakening your d5 square and this is i've seen this mistake quite a number of times already that black is making this typical mistake so assuming your opponent just made this mistake he allowed you to trade the dark square bishop what do you do here every single time i believe in the sicilian knight of setups when you play d6 and knight of six the dark square bishop best works in the long diagonal if you can always position in the on the long diagonal why is that so what's the long diagonal here g6 long castle bishop g7 that's a very powerful bishop and something like h4 just h5 just ignore it there's nothing more phobia yeah but why is that? Why why won't why I'm not even why I'm talking about the neither? Why I'm not recommending you to play the Sicilian dragon? Why do I bother with all of the neither? Why just don't play right away the dragon? So if I play here g6, what you have to understand is that after bishop e3, f3, bishop c4, queen d2. Okay, there's more than one move here. Bishop d7, long castle here, here. This is some very big theory. H4. Um, I don't know. H5 is more modern. H5 here, here. H5, knight h5, bishop h6. Deep stuff. This is deep stuff. But the bottom line is this. <laughs> the bottom line is this. White always mates first that's unfortunately what it is i mean white is always one step faster to attack so for example something like h4 b okay h4 knight c4 takes takes h5 takes okay maybe not take but then what to do i don't know maybe it's already lost um b5 h takes f takes bishop h6 etc blah 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 yeah sack sack mate yeah that's the problem. That's the general problem of the dragon. The dragon would be a great opening. Uh, it's... Tell it to Gawain Johnston. <laughs> he is the only GM who consistently is playing at the top level and he insists that it's playable. Yeah, As far as I know, the English grandmaster uh, Gawain Johnston is consistently the only GM who is playing the Sicilian dragon at the competitive level, at quite a high level. And still getting good results. But anyway, this is the point. This is the point what I want to tell you. This is why I don't advocate to play the dragon. It's risky. And now that we know this, 
Now that we know this, uh, let's say we manage to play... <laughs> okay. Now that we know this, and I managed to trade the dark square bishop, do you see the difference now? Oh, Sleepy Mario, listen, I, I haven't studied Dragon for quite some time. Yeah, so here, this is a great setup of the Dragon. You can now switch to the Dragon. So now you can play g6, long castle, bishop g7. You don't need to make a short castle unless you're looking for some adrenaline. Just keep the king in the center for the time being. Knight c6, knight b3. I don't know, something like b5 here, bishop d7, rook c8, knight e5, etc, etc, etc. Just keep the king in the center. Yeah. Don't give your opponent some unnecessary targets like... Like, I believe I'm gonna survive. Ah, yeah, good luck with that. So, h5, there is a fair chance you're gonna get mated there. So, keeping the king in the center of both the Sicilian... Neither and the dragon is a very big motive. You're not giving your opponent an easy way to start an attack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, let's assume, let's assume, and this is going to be a different topic. I know I'm going to mix it up. But let's assume our opponent plays bishop e2. We can play the dragon. This is the so-called Dragodorf. And it's it has a modest popularity. If you want to test it, it's totally fine. Although you've wasted them on a6. So you could play g6. And if white plays here, bishop g7, here, here. Now this is not really so dangerous because you have positioned your bishop on the long diagonal, you play knight c6, you play normal active moves, you're not gonna mate it really, really soon. Pirts? No, 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 it's a dragon, dragon with a6, with a6. Of course it could be tricky, for example something like bishop e2 here, bishop e3, <laughs> queen d2, and start to play cat and mouse, something like Knight c6, long castle, bishop d7. Yeah, just don't make a castle here yet. Unless you have a death wish. <laughs> yeah, so it's a super, super interesting way how you can um, combine some knowledge of the dragon. And uh, w w together with the knife. And I think it's in general it's a great idea to position the bishop on the long diagonal. Like I explained already, I would have done it from the start had there not been a direct attack at the king side. So if there is no direct attack, there you, you have this opportunity to switch to some kind of a dragon variation at the right time. So for example, I think the same setup I was choosing in this uh, line of bishop g5. Bishop g5, knight d7, f4, queen c7, queen f3, b5, here, here, what was the line again? And g6. Yeah, this is exactly the same, exactly the same. So again, I'm switching at some moment to the uh, g6, bishop g7. And uh, a4. a4, you mean sixth move? Let me check it. You mean here? A4? Yeah, that, that's a very nice point, actually. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think g6 is a great move here. I, I mean, even without any theoretical knowledge, there is not going to be a direct attack for white at the king side at the moment, anyway. So something like bishop e3 here, here. Now, this, this makes no sense in terms of queen d2. Really? Long castle? <laughs> Uh, with, a, with a pawn on a4, this makes absolutely no sense. No, none at all. So I think you can already, you can already, yeah, just sacrifice the pawn without, without thinking. Just without thinking, sacrifice the pawn, open the position, and just checkmate white on the at the queen side. Yes, yes, savage. The modern chess courses come with the PGM files, all of them. All righty. 
Is there something I didn't explain? This was a very, very quick course <laughs> of the night of, I mean, probably a world record. Slightly chaotic, as always, but um, but it is what it is. Just a second. Maybe there's some fun games I didn't show you. Oh, just a second. Oh, listen, I could show you yet another game to prove that h5 is a great move. Uh, I see that, yes, mama, but I, I think it, in general, it is a better idea to take with the bishop. I sort of already explained that. Yeah, yeah, miracle worker. <laughs> the Grand Prix attack. Ah, some closed systems. The Grand Prix attack. Um, what was it with Knight C3, right? Knight C3 and F4. What I would play here? Probably D6. Since you are a knight of player, f4, here, here, g6, here, here, short castle, knight of six. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why is it dangerous again? Something like what? The, what's the main line here? I don't know. Something like Queenie One. I mean, anyway, your typical idea is, yeah, Queenie One. I play Bishop G Four. Why this should be dangerous? Ah, oh, you want to check that line with Knight G Seven? I don't know that line. I always try to position the Knight on F Six, and the traditional idea is to play A A Six B Five B Four A Five A Four. Although I could play here, here. Just just ignore A Six here B Five here. Um, now you can play A Six. I know that the Grand Prix attack is quite popular at the club level. You're referring now to the e6 and knight g7, right? e6, and f5. Yeah, this is risky. g takes... Uh, that was the line here. d3, something like that. Yeah, I try to avoid this. I just try to avoid this and, and don't play this. I think the most safest setup always is avoid this business, position the knight on f6, Play short castle and uh, I'm focused at the queen side. So, typical ideas involve play bishop g4, get rid of this attacking knight so that you can position the knight on d4, something like bishop g4, queen h4, takes, takes, knight d4, rook h3, maybe. Does it work? And something like e6. Looks super solid to me f5 and can i play knight h5 yeah it looks looks reasonable here so knight h5 i'm happy to trade queens this is going to be our pawn usually earlier i don't know where with the knight on f6 i mean here f5 i don't think it's possible you just take it you just take it Uh, I'm not sure if it's even possible from this order in the moves, is it? Yeah, somebody please correct. Somebody please correct if I'm wrong, but I'm suggesting this setup. But even without a bishop on g4, I mean, I think that's the safest approach. But you can always play a6. a6 here, b5. Okay, maybe, maybe play something smarter, something like a3 b5 here 
uh, e6, now f5 maybe, takes, and something like this, yeah, maybe something like this. But this position doesn't strike me as uh, something dangerous, even, can I play, it's dangerous, you feel? Knight g5? Just a second. So you... Okay, maybe I don't have to play e6. No, maybe then we can stick with the uh, stick with the same uh, simple approach to play bishop g4. We need one on bishop g4. Just straight is annoying knight. Something like knight g5. h6. Takes, takes. <laughs> what is this? Uh, maybe e5. Ah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Takes, takes, f takes, queen d4, check. My beautiful idea doesn't work. Yeah, maybe something like knight g5 to keep the knight alive. h6, and what? Knight a5. Knight a5, yeah, I like that. That's also a possibility. Knight a5, some e5 could be a problem. Knight e8, queen h4. Knight g5. Now, this I don't like. Now, this I don't like. I think the knight belongs on c6. This is one of the most important pieces in the attack. So it's uh, a nice idea to remove it. Something like maybe e5. But e5 is not going to be a Grand Prix attack anymore. It's something else. D takes, F takes. Ah, it drops a pawn, I think. Does it? Ah, it doesn't drop a pawn. Take, take. Okay. So, knight h5. E6. No, this is not even Grand Prix attack. I don't know what is this. What is this? And if white plays something like queen h4, just take, take. Knight e4, e6. Super solid, build a brick wall. And once knight g5, you mean knight e4? Yeah, maybe. Again, you need to watch out from e5 and queen h4. So there's going to be a double attack. I'm not so sure what is this, to be honest. So we want to simplify. We want to trade this annoying knight. So the really hostile line I can see is knight f7. Nothing else. And keep the pin at alive for the time being, but the, at least the engine say nothing is working. Something like um, queen. I have no idea really what to play here. I mean, something like queen, maybe f5. f5, g takes, 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 h3 here, here. There's a million ways how black can hold this. Anyway, I think this is a much, much more safer approach than e6, knight, g7. Ah, I think I remember what I wanted. Any book recommendations? About the Sicilian or in general? Every single stream I'm getting the same question. In general. <laughs> what was the what was the title again? Gary Kasparov's My Great Predecessors. <laughs> My Great Predecessors. Uh, I have a problem to spell that. It's a great, great series. Yeah, read Kasparov's books. I think it's a great start. It's gonna give you a nice overview of the previous world champions. It's written in a popular language. <laughs> uh, there are many, many, many great books. So uh, as long as you're choosing something. So uh, there was one line I wanted to mention you as well was it was e4 c5, knight f3 d6 and bishop c4. 
Yeah, this is quite tricky. And uh, uh, the thing about a uh, bishop c4, now we play knight of 6 d3, and you might fall into this trap because you think, wait a second, now, now I can try to set up some uh, dragon setup, right? Baudler attack? If you say so, I, I don't know the title, really. I know that there was a local player in Latvia who used to play, play it all the time. Probably more than one coronation here, right? But in general, we want no, 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 no. We want to play. We want to play g6. We always want to play g6. If we have the opportunity, don't play passive. I mean, e6 slightly passive. If you want to look for something solid, hello Nikola Tesla. But the problem here is that g6 is a mistake. Now this is a known mistake. It runs into e5, and after d takes knight e5. It's not trash. It's playable. It is. It is playable. It just doesn't give any advantage. So the threat is mate, e6. And uh, what was the most dangerous move? I think it was queen of three. Queen of three with uh, some threats. And after bishop g7, knight bishop b5 check. And after knight d7, boom. So this is an opening trap. Knight d7 is a scholar's mate. And bishop d7 is a free pawn. That's it. So this is the idea. So you need to watch out from this. Uh, so first, what you need to do is to play knight c6 first. Not to miss it. And after shot glass, now you just play g6. That's it. Easy game. c3, bishop g7. What was rookie 1? No, wait. I think it was bishop b3. Castle. I try to remember. I think it was rookie one. And was it e5? Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, you can even play this line. For example, e5 right away. Ah, oh, wait. I think it was h6 though. Was it? So that d4 is not so good because of takes, takes, and bishop g4, which is a traditional idea to play e5 afterwards. So this is why white includes h3, e5, d4. I know the engines love these positions. But in general, I mean, this is just easy, easy position for black, something like queen e7. And, for example, angels think this is a great position and advocate to play d5. <laughs> so it's just, just a great king's Indian position for black. So the center is closed, the queen side is closed, and black is free to do everything he wants to do at the king side. Knight h5, f5, f4, etc. Easy game. The engines don't understand this. Apart from that, it's not so easy to advocate here anything. I think I even had a game here, just a second. Uh, let me find it. No, I don't have it. I have it somewhere. I don't know where. Just a second. I'll check if I'm missing something. If I wanted. Oh, what is this? Wanted to show you some additional lines, but... Okay, I think I already forgot. Right, so queen e7 and you want to play, obviously, at the king side. And at the right time, you might double take on d4 or triple take on d4 to pressure this pawn. For example, something like knight d2. Oh, knight d2 just drops a pawn. Okay, so let's say knight a3. Probably you can already take. Take, 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 take. Queen d4 and... Rookie e8. And pressure this pawn. Bishop e6, d5, knight e4. Usually this is a good game for black. So, but bishop c4 is not trash. I mean, it's it's playable. Comple completely playable. Here. Oh, just a second. No. Knight of 6. 
d3 yeah but knight c6 is important order of the moves before you want to play g6 here g6 yeah but not g6 in the beginning um just a second just a second i think i wanted to show you something else Okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Maybe maybe I forgot to show something, it's probably entirely possible. So now I explain you the core ideas of the night of in slightly over two hours. <laughs> You're gonna be world experts. White can play against our backward pawn? Toshiro, which which game? Which line again is it? You mean... Ah, you mean against the pawn on d6? You mean here, right? So knight c6... Castle g6... Alapin! No! Alapin, I already did a course. I did a bootcamp about Sicilian Alapin. Check it, check it out. Uh, check my YouTube channel just a second i'll post a link there uh check my um playlist of the boot camps it has the lapping i did all of it already yeah that's a good question about bishop b5 check uh try to answer that h3 i already talked about this briefly i mean more than briefly actually so d4 c takes knight e4 knight f6 knight c3 a6 h3 i suggest to play e5 with the idea is to play h5 if knight e2 if knight e2 yeah then then i suggest to play h5 and i already scared some people here <laughs> that h5 is very very scary looking move but it's hyper hyper modern only knight b3, I don't suggest to play h5 because after g4, knight e2, knight g3, the knight on b3 is not participating in the typical idea. So the mask operation. Yeah, the mask operation. Um, yeah, this is something where I feel quite an expert because this is the very first database I wrote for modern chess. You can find it the database is in in the chat command of exclamation mark author i did three that no four four databases there is more stuff coming i just won't announce it before it's ready it's gonna be a big surprise <laughs> i'm working on a new project i won't tell you what it is big giant project when it will be announced you'll be pleasantly surprised so while it's not official, I won't say a word. And uh, yeah, so here after bishop b5, in general, you can revisit what I already explained during my anti-Sicilian bootcamp. I already did this for white, but for black. You have to understand there's three moves. Knight c6, nobody plays like that. I mean, some, some strangers, <laughs> they, they play that, but I mean, knight c6 is not good. So other knight d7 or bishop d7 the major difference is bishop d7 at least at professional circles is considered to be i don't mind a draw draw okay because this leads to very um very uh peaceful positions quite often where white is slightly pressing but black is sort of like i'm okay draw, draw is okay knight d7 on the other hand is much much more aggressive so okay after bishop d7 takes take with the queen always take with the queen so that you can position the knight on c6 now let's say white is playing the old setup after the short castle knight c6 c3 knight of six either rookie one or queen e2 doesn't really matter e6 take take d5 e5 knight e4 so this is all you need to know in general i mean there's obviously more more lines like than this i don't think you'll be capable to uh put the bishop on the long diagonal so for example here 
C3 you would love to, but I have a feeling this is too slow. D4 takes, takes, bishop g7, risky, knight f6, and something like d5. No, I don't, I don't like this. This looks weird. Here the bishop doesn't belong, but maybe you can be smart about this and see if your opponent is uh, playing it not aggressively. Let's say d3, knight f6, and something like knight c3. Yeah, I think this is a great moment to play g6. I think so. No, e5, just a second scurry cannon, I'll check that. So g6, something like, I don't know, maybe h3, bishop g7, bishop e3, here, knight e2 with some ideas to push here. And just play knight e4, b5, b4, a5, a4, a2, etc, etc, etc. Quite an easy game, you concentrate where your pawn structure is showing you the way to play. I think I already explained this in one of my previous boot camps. Very often, the pawn structure is like, like a marker, like a sword. It shows you the way, which direction should you play. As you can see, those pawns, e7, d6, c5, they show you direction, where should you play. I mean, that's some very basic strategy, but very often it works. And for white, it's the same. So the pawns on c2, d3, e4, they show you, you should be looking forward at the king side. And this is what essentially what white is very often doing. f4, g4, f5, g5, etc. Not to ruin the pawn structure and keep it healthy. Uh, not always, not always. I would be extremely careful to postulate something like that. I would just say like this. If you have the opportunity and your opponent is not playing it ambitiously, think about it. Just think about it. If you can position your bishop on the long diagonal, if your opponent is playing very aggressively in the center, probably you don't have the time for that. If your opponent is playing slow with a cup of coffee, probably you have time to position the bishop on the long diagonal. Um, yeah, so instead of this, uh, the most popular setup for white, which I've recommended myself in the database, is c4. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, these positions. Probably the simplest approach you can take here is to close the position. Just play e5, play knight c6, play g6. Bishop g7, knight e7, castle f5. That is the easiest I can recommend to you without studying all of these um, all of these long, long lines. This is very, very easy setup. White is slightly better. If he knows perfectly, no, it's not the Marozzi bind because black stopped it. Black stopped it. Marozzi bind would have been after uh, c4, now, this would have been a Marozzi bind. Knight c3, g6, d4. Yeah, this is Marozzi bind. There's so many nuances. I mean, there's so many nuances. What you need to know, I've played this hundreds of times with what already. So I know it quite well, and it's very easy for black, black to misplay it. I played against very good GMs who keep misplaying it all the time. So if you're looking at this for the first time, the simplest approach for you is just close the center here already. Just, just close the center with e5, knight c6, g6, bishop g7, knight g7, short castle f5. It's the easiest there is. White is slightly better, but for you at least it's an easy plan. No, it's not a bad bishop. It always will come to life. Don't worry about it. The position is not closed. So, for example, about the back bishop, I could have the bishop here. For example, I'll make some random moves. I'll make some random moves. For example, this and this. So, you might ask, wait a second, so bishop on g7 is a terrible bishop. So, I cannot go for this. But the difference is, this position is not closed. If the position is not closed, then you can always bring it to life 
play g4, bishop h6, or f5, g4, etc., 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 and you activate your bishop. What makes really a bishop bad is that there would have been a pawn on f5 and a pawn on g4. Now, that's a bad bishop, yeah, because there is no way to activate it. And very often, in also in topical lines, one of the sides doesn't mind having a bad bishop because it realizes it's going to spring to life later. So it's not really that basic. Yeah, It's a bad bishop right now, but after a couple of moves, it's going to be one of the best pieces on the board. Okay, this is ridiculous. What I show you, just wanted to explain you the difference. Um, yeah, about the knight d7. Knight d7 is much, much more aggressive. And the idea in general is you want to play a 6. You want to then take with the bishop and aim for the 2 bishop advantage. However, I would like to again point out this following line. So d4, c takes, queen d4, a6, bishop d7, bishop d7, and knight c3. About this line, I recommend, if you are not looking for suffering, avoid playing e5. Play something peaceful. Play something more careful. So the reason is this. I mean, if you play e5, queen d3 and h6, which is a super popular line, at least it used to be some time ago, there is a very annoying setup for white. Here. Here. What was it? Here. Oh, just a sec. Not bishop on c6. Stupid me. So bishop e6. Here, ah, sorry, short castle, here, a4, here, 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 here. Yeah, maybe I already mixed it up, but super easy to misplay this. There was even a very high level game between, uh, who was it? Was it Hare Krishna against Janne Pomneshi? Maybe. Janne Pomnishi has suffered this line a couple of times with black already. Him being such an aggressive or crazy player, he was just totally squeezed here. It's so difficult to show activity in this line. And this is only, uh, I think so in general, playing for two results. Either white wins or black draws. <laughs> and for white it's easy. f3, b3, a5, knight a4, and c4. If white manages to do that, not fun. So I think, uh, at least at the professional level, GMs have already understood that as soon as knight c3 lands, a more careful approach is to play e6. Much, much more careful. And after short castle, you need to be extremely accurate here. I think it was something like queen c7. Um, I don't remember, to be honest. Maybe Okay, maybe queen c7 is not good. Yeah, should have checked it. I think it was e6 and... Was it bishop c6? Bishop g5, knight f6, bishop e7, queen, e, queen c7. Very, very accurately played this out. And that's the way to play it. All right. But of course, for more insights about this line, you should... Uh, Check my one of my previous boot camps I did about the anti Sicilians. I think I mentioned this line as well back then. And anything else is not really so dangerous. Something like short castle, you just play a6. Bishop d7, bishop d7. Should the position open, you open. Queen d4. Yeah, just watch out for this e5. Maybe knight of six, knight, maybe c4. And again, if you have some opportunity, go for the dragon. Some dragon setup. G6, bishop, g7. Because, I mean, I don't have this universal recipe when you can play g6, when you cannot play g6. Because these circumstances, they, they change. They change all the time. There's going to be something else in one position and something else in another. So I just want to say that keep this in your mind. That if you have the opportunity to play g6, bishop, g7, and if your opponent allows it, the bishop on g7 is going to feel much more active than on e7. And it's also not going to create a weakness on d6. So 
it's up to you to evaluate which which moment you can really do this all righty any final questions any final questions I feel I've prepared a giant army of Sicilian Night of Experts here. <laughs> Something like in three hours, the entire Night of. At, you know, in the worst scenario, <laughs> in the worst scenario, at least you'll know to which pay attention to. To what pay attention. For example, these H5 ideas to stop those pawn advancements at, at the king side. That's quite a popular idea. Queen d4, yeah, there is such a move, queen d4. So, knight f3, d6, check over line, yeah, was it? Queen d4. I forgot that, I think it was check over. So, queen takes on d4, <laughs> crushing salt. <laughs> right. Um, queen d4, I think the simplest one is just to play a6. Don't allow any bishop b5 business. Although I think it wasn't really so dangerous now that I think. Knight c6, bishop b5. What was the line here? Here. Takes, takes. Yeah, but this is less fun. Ah, a6. I think a6 in general. I think so. a6 and... So that you can play knight c6, knight f6 and if possible also g6. Yeah, Scurry Cannon, this is what I... I think a6, uh, the Knight c6 also is possible, yeah. This, But this is less dynamic. So it's a quite static position here. Again, e5 is going to lead to similar positions. Knight f6, Knight c3. Or maybe not. I mean, if you still can manage to play g6, why not? I'm listening to Shiro. All yours. E5. E5, D takes. In general, black doesn't mind this. This is okay. Takes, takes, knight, E5. This is not dangerous. Oh, you mean for black, E5? Yeah, probably. e5 here, bishop e7. Again, you need to watch out from this idea. Whoops. This is something... Ah, you need to be careful not to get into this. So you're very close to reach white's dream position. The dream knight on d5 against a very bad bishop on f6. So the other knight is going to jump something like this. Here, here, and here. Complete domination. Unless, of course, you can somehow... No, this is bad. This is just bad. Unless rook c8 c2... Unless, of course, you somehow manage magically to push d5 very quickly. This is not good. This is not good. You don't want to weaken the d5 square with, the, with, the, with no real reason. Here, I think, actually, g6 looks good. Um. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do understand. It's uh, it can be confusing. It can be confusing. Why can I do this in one position? Why can't I do this in another position? Yeah, but at least you'll know to what pay attention to. You mean Toshiro? This line for white? Queen d4. Yeah, there's. I think queen d4 also was analyzed by, by another author at Modern Chess, if I remember correctly. If you're interested, you can you can even purchase it. I think so. It was, it was by some Indian grammar. Was published this Queen D4 line anti Sicilian against um, against uh, Sicilian neither. After G6 in Rosalima. Knight b3. Ah, yeah, yes, mama. Knight b3. Yeah. Wait a second. Knight b3. Here, knight b3? Here, right? <laughs> yeah, this knight b3. I remember. You know, there's quite a funny story about this knight b3. 
Um, I was playing in 2016 Watches Olympiad for Team Latvia in Azerbaijan. The best Olympiad ever. I mean, it's fantastic. It was a really fantastic Olympiad. And I remember this 9B3 back in 2016 was quite a popular move because somebody already used to play it. And there was a, quite an article at, was it the, the Russian uh, 64? What, what's their journal called? I don't remember. And uh, somebody analyzed 9B3. And I was to play against uh, Robin van Kampen from Netherlands. We were, we were facing Netherlands. Top board for Netherlands was playing Anish Giri. On top board, I was I was playing on the third board, I think. And I was playing against Robin Van, uh, Van Kampen. And I was playing with White. And he, he was, at the time at least, I don't know what he's doing right now. At the time, he was a uh, hardcore Sicilian other player. I read the journal. I had it with me in the hotel. I had no knowledge about it. So, okay, this is for life. Hey, Dina, thank you. Thank you for your rate of 71. Appreciate uh, for your visit. Hope you had a great stream. Too bad I didn't have, had a look what you were doing there. Um, I saw you have a very nice Christmas theme, at least in the face cam. <laughs> I would love to have one. Right. So what we are doing right now, we are having a boot camp about how to properly play the Sicilian Nidorf. I already teached everything in almost three hours. <laughs> so at least I, I hope that my viewers managed to understand some basic concepts. <laughs> yeah. And now we are witnessing what is this weird 9b3 uh, sixth move for white. And I'm telling a story how I once played it in the 2016 World Chess Olympiad against Robin Van Kampen. Anyway, so the story was this. I played... And I beat three. I was just laughing deep inside. I mean, it's just a ridiculous move. My knowledge was something like five games of this line. And my opponent was deep in very, 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 in very deep thought for something like 30 minutes. I I didn't see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't see. What you were doing anyway, though? I don't know. <laughs> Not chess related, right? <laughs> All right, so, so the point of 9b3 is it's quite ridiculous. You want to avoid to play e5. Because seemingly after e5, there's bishop g5. But if you if you'd ask the engines, it is still possible. It is still possible to go for this line with black. It's not even make, making it obsolete. But the thing is, it's impossible for white to get with this order of the moves, with this setup. Turkish right. <laughs> okay. And it is possible to play some Dragodorf after g6, where white has played knight b3. It is possible possible to play e6 with the idea to play, I think it was g4? Or bishop e3 and then g4. Listen, I don't remember this. Because, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you again. Um, so I don't remember this. This was some old analysis four years ago. It's weird. I mean, it is possible possible to play it uh, for white. I, I did play it. There was a, quite a shock reaction for a certain player on our team who said, why are you doing this? Now we're essentially playing three games with black. <laughs> and, I, and I had to convince my teammate that this is... This is this is top stuff actually, and the coach actually protected me. He said, "Yeah, this is this is this is playable line. Nine B three. This is what people play right now, but this is just just ridiculous. Yeah, you don't you don't play like that, especially in Olympiad when your teammates are watching. Um, yeah, there's many many lines here, so I I won't even touch A four. To be honest, I never really understood the move H four. Can somebody explain this to me? I did. Uh, some annotations of the um, uh, what I'm sorry, European US Chess Championships in, back in 2018. I was the supposedly the press officer writing the uh, articles for the official website, and I was uh, annotating some games how th some top girls under 18 play this line, and I tried to understand what's the purpose of this line, uh, purpose of this move. 
why play h4? To be honest, I never understood. <laughs> so what what is this? I mean, why play h4? Because h3, I understand. H3, you want to play g4, you want to play g5, bishop g to blah 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 blah. You want to fight for space. What is h4? To stop g6. <laughs> So sometimes h4 is a useful move, sometimes it's not. I mean, the theory is just developing to mind-boggling depths. So what can I say? I mean, yeah, some, some total weirdness. I, I think it comes as an element of surprise that your opponent doesn't know what to react. Yeah, and like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, the last weird move I saw, which was not played yet, and now it's credited by the young Lucas von Forrest, it is bishop d2. Yeah, this is the the latest top notch top notch addition to the to the family of knight of theoretical lines. And the idea is after knight c6 takes takes and bishop d3. <laughs> so is this serious? No, it's not serious. I mean, but it is playable. It is playable. Um, actually, rook g1 here is quite fun. Rook g1 with the idea to play g4, g5, but again, you can probably play some Dragodorf already. Play g6, since there's not going to be a direct attack against you at the king side. So again, think about this. Think about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah g4. No, not g4 right away. g4 drops a pawn. I'm pretty sure that remains to be a novelty to be played, but that's a bad novelty. You don't want to play it with white. Um, yeah, and I remember, I remember when I was uh, writing this uh, database for modern chess, uh, anti Sicilians, bishop b5, and my bottom line was, why bother? Why bother with all of these lines? Because clearly, in the best main lines of Sicilian knight, black is doing fine. Why bother thinking of something funny, something unexplored? <laughs> you can play the anti Sicilian right away. With bishop b5. So that was my mindset. Nepo doesn't play g4, I'm pretty sure. No, 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 he doesn't play g4. The grob? What was the grob again? Please remind me, what is the grob? I might have forgotten. I, I seem to recognize the title, but g4? Oh no. <laughs> no, 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 no g4. G4 is the only move where white doesn't equalize. Every single move, what white does, I mean everything, even F3 equalizes, A4 equalizes, H4 somehow keeps the position equal. After G4, solidly white is worse. <laughs> no, 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 there's, there's no need for that. There's no need for that. All right, all right. Anything about the Nidorf? Yeah, this is serious. I mean, the serious stuff is over. Now we can chit chat. I mean, <laughs> I already was blah, 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 talking for three hours, theoretical stuff. Most of which probably my dear audience didn't understand. But okay. But okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some room for some gambits here as well. Something like B4, I don't know. So many ways how white can play this out. Yeah, I didn't touch, of course, any closed systems. La what is a labyrinth? What is that? Yeah, yeah, sure, I know what's a labyrinth, a maze, but which which line? You mean pros and cons? Ah, you get... yeah. Yeah, I, I think I said it. I mean, Nidorf. Why Nidorf over Dragon? Because of the direct attack. That's the reason. So again, I think I already explained it. That's the reason. There is a direct attack for White. And it's bad. It, it is bad. I mean, it doesn't matter what the experts are saying you. It's bad. <laughs> I mean, it's very easy for White. H4, H5, G4... It's not good. But if your opponent is doing something else, and let's say he's, he's making a short castle, you can mix. 
together, Nidorf with the dragon, making it Dragodorf. That's what it is. A good gambit? Oh, thank you Esteban Fun for your sub, really appreciate it. Hope you like the content. Hope you'll play more Dragon. No, no, no Dragon. Cecilia Nadorf. <laughs> right. Bishop c4. The Bowdler. Yeah, I think I mentioned it. Just a sec. I think I mentioned it slightly. If you if you are gonna miss something, you can revisit the video archive. I mentioned the. I'm sorry, not d4, of course. The majority of the lines. So bishop c4, knight of six, d3. So this was the the Baudler attack, right? My chat educated me. So I didn't know really the title. As long as you're not playing g6 right away, it's okay. Just play knight c6 first and then g6. Because immediate g6... Oh, what happened there? Sorry. Sorry. Where did that go? So bishop c4, knight of 6, d3. As long as you don't play g6 right away, because it runs into quite annoying e5. d5, knight e5, e6, win f3. This is a problem. This is a big problem. You don't want to do this. No, 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 no. Just play knight c6 first. And after something like short castle, just play g6. Try to position the bishop on the long diagonal. It's going to be better. e6, bishop e7 is possible. It's slightly passive. Okay, young lord. Longest game? I don't know. Two hung and move something? I, I don't I don't remember to be honest. Maybe two hung. Um what else did I miss? A good gambit for beginners by Esteban Fan Fan. A good gambit by beginner beginners. White or black? Uh, there's many, many gambits. You don't like e6, g6. Well, Lali, nobody's gonna make you. <laughs> you are the one who is choosing what to do. I mean, uh, yeah. Thank you, Renki Orona. I don't remember Yanbord. Uh, Esteban, can you please enlighten me? With white or black? I mean, there's many, many gamuts. Ah, listen. Listen. Where you can start is check out one of my previous boot camps. How to counter 15 popular gambits. It's on YouTube. It's in the channel. Uh, in the playlist of my boot camps. And I did already a boot camp about gambits. Although the topic was how to counter them you can probably find something useful for you to use. Smith Mora Gambit against Cecilia is super popular. Cecilia, Smith Mora. Although at a professional level, it's not good. I even advocate that it's ridiculous, but <laughs> it's working. Yeah, all our base, but everybody loves to accept a Gambit, right? It's free material. So e4, c5, knight f3. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, d4. Now, what was it? d4, c takes c3. Yeah. You can try this gambit. Aim for quick development. At high levels, uh, Renkiri or Nora. No, I think at the high levels, the gambits just don't work. Because it's easy to study. So you can check this uh, archive I did about the 15 popular gambits. And I explained how to counter them. Some basic stuff really. Because <laughs> I mean, I don't have so much time to explain in depth every single one. But um, they just don't work. It, there are not really many gambits which work regularly. Of course, except a queen's gambit. <laughs> I mean, queen's gambit technically is not even a gambit. Technically. Because white very easily just regains the pawn. A king's gambit is not so good. 
but it's fun it's fun yeah it's fun definitely i think something what you could try to play is that was the danish gambit was it yeah d takes bishop c4 c takes here and again oh, was it no wait it's not the danish gambit it was with the e5 it was with the e5 ah with the white you can also try the ponziani gambit e4 e5 what was the line again um, bishop c4 knight of six d4 e takes and knight of three what did i mix up already yeah maybe i already mixed up check out my yep okay okay then kiro rona check it out yeah but again i'm talking now about a professional level gms they know this stuff you're not going to surprise anybody i mean at the club level it's completely fine and it's actually incorrigible by the way did you see did you see this recent game which was played by daniel dubov against um sergey karyakin in the final round of the russian super final <laughs> I mean, this was incra crazy stuff, really. Incredible, incredible stuff. So Dubov pretty much invented a new line, which is not really surprising. Yeah, that was something, was it? So he was playing a gambit. Even at the highest level, you can play a gambit. Yeah. Ah, Dubov has many immor immortal games. He is the modern Morphe. So... So the line was knight of three, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, c3, knight of six. Everybody knows this. <laughs> Delayed. D4, e takes, and b4. I remember when I was watching this, I was, what? What? What is this? I've never seen it before. People don't play like that. I don't think Karyaki knew much about this position. So after bishop b6 e5 and d5 feels to be the main move here and Karyakin played knight e4 I already forgot what was the continuation here short castle Traxler what is Traxler is this Traxler I don't know what is this I'm not really so good with the titles of rare rare gambits so I don't know all of them and ended up with a spectacular game there was actually there was actually a day after that the same line was played in in the Sunway Sitges tournament in Spain, which right now is going on. I think it was Maxime Lagarde who played with White, and he played against who did he play against? Nino Batsashvili, maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. I was just briefly checking it. So e5, d5, takes, takes. What was the line here? <laughs> I don't remember. B5. Oh, maybe it was a check first. Check. Something like that. So again, um, about the gambits in general, I think it's super important to have the element of surprise. Yeah, total chaos, total. Engine says black is winning. <laughs> black is strategically winning already. But from a practical point of view, when you're not prepared, when you're delivering a surprise element, it's something else. Yeah, and Dubov, of course, is known for bluffing. <laughs> the greatest bluffer of modern chess. But that's how you play chess. No, actually I should have said that uh, Dubov is the modern Tal. Yeah, because Tal used to play like that. Traxler, okay. Yeah, there are many, many great lines. Many great gambits. So maybe I could... Do you have any preferences? One of the next boot camps, I could do a gambit, a certain gambit or a couple of gambits because I did a boot camp about how to counter 15 popular gambits. 
And of course, the, the bottom line was the Queen's Gambit. You cannot refute it because you just have, have to head over to Netflix and just watch the Gambit, the Queen's Gambit yourselves. <laughs> that was the joke uh, of the bottom line of the of the boot camp. But, but do you have any preferences of Gambits you would like for me to cover? I mean, I could do it, definitely. There's so many topics I could talk about. And typically once a week, once a week I'm doing my boot camp, I'm trying to explain some... Uh, theoretical stuff in a fun way so that everybody understands so today everybody learned the Sicilian Niner <laughs> I've done some other theoretical topics as well so you can check out what's done and what's not King's Indian yeah that's gonna be difficult because I know very little about it I mean I have some basic knowledge I could try to explain to you I know I know about the King's Indian much less than about the Nidorf. In Nidorf, my knowledge is mediocre. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Up to EM level, I can play it. Against very strong GM, a strong preparation, I won't risk it. Because very, very deep theory. I understand the uh, core ideas very well. But when it goes to very sharp lines, very deep theoretical preparation, I wouldn't dare to play Nidorf. The Scotch Gambit, yeah, it's also possible. Scotch Gambit is fun, yeah, it is fun. All right, guys, I think I think I'm gonna send me Slav. Never played, never played it. Ryan Lopez, Ryan Lopez. How to play the Ryan Lopez? Yeah, that's a potential. That's a potential idea. We could talk about that. Ah, by the way, by the way, by the way, I uh, wanted to remind IQP I already discussed. IQP I already had a topic about IQP. Check out the archive, it's there. This is the 21st bootcamp already, so I already did something before, so it's not like I'm doing everything from a blank page. <laughs> uh, listen, but while, while you're thinking about the possibilities, I would like to remind you, tomorrow... At the same time, I will have a special event. Italian. <laughs> Maybe I could do that, yeah. Some Italian structures. Yes, structures. More structures, are more, they're more important than the actual theory. Um, tomorrow, I'll have a special stream. I will be doing commentary for the Australian Victorian Down Under Blitz Tournament. There's going to be a closed event where I was um, invited to play. Uh, I decided to do the commentary uh, instead. So I'll be doing the commentary of the Blitz tournament. Oh, oh, you live there? <laughs> I was in Melbourne five years ago. I was playing in the Melbourne Chess Club in the Australasian Masters. Actually, during this time in December, end of December, that's a traditional tournament in Melbourne. And tomorrow, they're going to host, at least here at chess.com, a tournament, uh, which, which is titled as Victorian Down on, what was it, a Victorian Down Under Blitz Tournament. Yeah, there's all of the leading Australian players are going to play. Anton Smirnov is going to play. Uh, Timur Kiyobakarov is going to play. And I don't know about Matt, Max Illingworth. But all of, all of the Aussies are going to play there. I also was gonna was going initially to play there, as one of the rule was GMs who have played in Australia they are also invited to play in the tournament. It's a closed event, but I decided <laughs> I decided I'm gonna do the commentary instead. So that's gonna be tomorrow at the same time. It starts Australian time, something like 7:30 p.m. Uh, yeah, don't miss that, please. And. Uh, European time, I think it's 9.30 Central European time. Yeah, so Sunday evening, yeah, for Melbourne and it's uh, morning here. So I'll be drinking my morning coffee, doing some proper commentary for you guys. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. Uh, yeah, but today I have to finish. I mean, it was super, super fun to talk with you guys. If you have some additional ideas you would like to talk about, you have something which you think is definitely worth a bootcamp. I would like to remind that I have a club here at chess.com. 
which is I titled not very originally GM Nations Chess Club. That's me. <laughs> That's my virtual chess club. I'm organizing various activities there. Uh, most notably, quite often I organize arenas. Thank you, Renk Verona. Thank you. Really, really, it's important to hear that. I appreciate that. And uh, more stuff is going to come soon. And there you can post your suggestions. What do you want to see or something you like, what you didn't like, or you would like to see to be added. Some ideas for streams. We can discuss that. This is the place in the club where you can reach me at any given time. I'm checking it on a daily basis. I'm there all the time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Steve, again. And see you tomorrow. But before I finish my stream, I think it would be nice to do a little raid because I was raided today for twice, twice, twice already by two ladies. Uh, one was D Dina Belenkaya and the second was Alexandra Kastanyuk, if I remember correctly. Just Queen, I think that's correct. So what about the raid? Just a second. I'll uh, switch to different screen. Is there somebody you would like to raid? Just a second, just a second. Somebody in particular, I see there's Row to GM 3000. Who is that guy? Is doing something uh, there? I'll tell you. Ten hours in, fatigue starts to. Mean candidates. Fatigue yeah, I would love to, in. love to do right. that. Big one streak. Big one streak. Maybe the it's more realistic. You could see, you could see me as a commentator in the candidates. That would be pieces. more realistic than me to play in the candidates because the competition is so tough. To okay, I'm gonna raid you over to this guy. Road to GN three thousand. Alright. I've seen him a couple of times streaming. What this guy's trying to do this. He is usually providing some entertaining commentary. So thank you guys that you are here. And I'll be back tomorrow with more stuff. The bootcamp is going to be next week, probably. So. Oh, he became a national monster. Oh, uh, <laughs> national monster. <laughs> national monster. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Have a great Saturday. Yeah, great potential. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.